Alrighty. Let us post that we are live. Post in there. Let's see. Um <sighs> All right. <clears throat> yeah, so this is, yep, this is the right project. <laughs> Always good to double check and make sure I, I have the correct thing. Um, but yeah, this is uh, spamming console with bat, the video game. Um... Ah, that's something I need to put in the issues, uh, text file, um, pulsing over enemies to see information doesn't always work. So, uh, as you can see here, we have our little video game, uh, oh no, we're going into a dead end. But yeah, so we lose health. Uh, we don't die. We just go into the negatives. Um, but yeah, so we have a game. We can attack. We can we can die, but not die. And uh, you know, life is good. <laughs> you negative four hundred health. You know, whatever. That's how video games work. Um, so. There's, there's, uh, there's a couple things I want to take care of with this. I mean, we're really not that far off from it being, like, vaguely playable. Um... I think the UI system and everything is, like, it's in a good spot. Um... Yo, game dev! Yeah. Yeah, we're doing some more game dev. How's the, uh, how's the chat overlay? It's it it okay. Put it like right up there. Um. But yeah, we're working on this little thing again because uh, I was thinking about it lately, and I'm like, you know what? I want to get back to it. I want to like do it some more. So, um, right now it just generates the three basic levels. Your stats are, I think, yeah. You know, combat works. You can you can attack 
bat by moving into them, and they can attack you by moving into you. Um, so that shit is working, and they can see you. They, you know, if you're in their line of sight and they see you, they uh, fucking go after you, and they turn red to, like, indicate that they've seen the player. Helps, you know, keep track of that um, for the moment. But yeah, so there's no death condition, you know, whatever. It's just the, the basic combat stuff is working. And as you kill bats, you get uh, EXP, um, and that, that works too. I think I want to make it so the EXP number is like a mouse overable thing, like your race and your, you know, these that give you the descriptions on what these are. Oh. I think these are all one too short. I never noticed that. Well, there's, uh, there's something to fix. <laughs> Maybe the whole fucking bar should just, you know, up to here instead of making it like the word, but I feel like it's kind of intuitive that, like, oh, you mouse over the word itself and it, like, tells you. Um, there's not really anything that indicates you can mouse over it. <laughs> I don't know how to, how to show that to the player in, you know, in, in some way that is not, you know, this whatever. Um, but we'll think about that later. Anyways, um, how do I, how do I end this nonsense? EXP 100. All right. So, um, maybe, yeah. But I think instead of working on that, because that can come later with polishing up the UI and stuff, I think what I want to do today is tackle some of the stuff. I'm glad I made this. Um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll do some UI stuff later. I don't know if I'm going to do it here or if I should do it after I do some of these other systems. You know, like, and the UI stuff should really be later. Probably around the time when we're doing inventory and, and stuff like that. We'll touch up the UI. And maybe we'll put it right there. Um... But the combat log is pretty important, I think, for a roguelike. Uh, yeah, yeah, it should be playable without a mouse. Um, I just, I, I like having little mouse extras on top of things. Um, but yeah, let's let's work on a combat log feature, which actually won't be that bad. Um, I don't know if I want it to be like its own object. I guess I should, right? Just to like just to make it, like, a thing. Uh... So, what the hell is settings? Oh, right, I was changing my font size. Um... So let's see. For the log, right, uh, we're gonna be making, we're gonna be making a class, and this is gonna be, uh... Right. Yeah, it, it, that's all we need at the moment, and then we'll we can add stuff to it. Um, and all we have to do for this this uh, text log, maybe like that colon. Uh, I've forgotten a little bit of the uh, the 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 old Python fucking syntax here, so we're gonna have to refer to a couple other things. Um, so you do that, and then you do a colon, and then you do your shit. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I think it'll go, like, the, the character stat thing on the right side can just be cut in half, and the bottom half can be the, uh, the log uh, for now, and that'll, that'll be totally fine. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Do we need TCOD stuff here? I don't think so, right? Because all this is going to do is hold some data that we're gonna just have in like a window that goes into the UI. Um, there's gonna be uh, some UI stuff we just have to tack on. Uh, a lot of this should be in a function too, like an init function or something, but you know, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> uh, we'll get there eventually. But anyways, um, so what we can do is I, I was actually working on some other like text adventure thing in Python 
that was using T Kenter for some like, you know, UI stuff. Um, and I made a little like log thing that scrolls back, but uh, really all this needs is. Yeah, like lines or something. So self dot text equals just an empty array. Uh, and then is there anything else it needs? Not really. <laughs> it just needs some text. Um, and it needs like push text. Or push line. Um, and what it'll do is self.text. Is there an append in in Python? I need to pull up my my handy dandy professional programmer's tool of Google on your side monitor. And Python array. I mean, they may be called lists, but whatever. Um, so what do arrays have in... They do have a pend. Beautiful. Um, so I think what would be probably... So let's take a look at how our UI is laid out, right? How it displays stuff in the UI already. Um, I believe the UI is laid out with, like... Fucking content for the window. That prints the borders. Yeah, so like each line on print line. So each line. Each element of this array is an entire line of text. So if we give our log a line of text, right? Um, it can then just fill the uh, the windows like content, like the lines of text that it renders out. It can just grab that from the text log. And then whatever, as you scroll through the text log, it'll just like start here in the array, end here in the array, and that's what goes into the, the window. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. On, each entry in the array is one complete line of text, is how we'll do it. Um, append text. This is going to be very simple. Um, but maybe we'll need to add some fancy functionality to it later for, like, formatting or something. I don't know. Um, and the 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 way that we render out, like, for instance, the, um, is it an initialized game? Yeah, so the way that we can access variables and stuff in our text is we can use these like formatted string things that uh that just like put the shit in there from variables and you don't have to like it works really well um so when we when we append text all we have to do is is make sure that we use our formatted string stuff for the the name of the the people doing the combat and stuff like that and uh it'll be good to go so, import the log, make it a log, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on down to probably initialize game. Does this run even if you don't load a game? Initialize game, yeah, if low okay, yeah. So this is this is what runs all the time. Um 
Okay, so this right here is in the else for setting up a new game. So we go after that, and then here's where we start setting up our UI stuff. Um, so... All right. So the, 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 the UI layer that shows our character's stats... Where is that? This is the pause menu UI that's getting set up right here. Um, I think. Hmm. Where are the... Dude, I should have put fucking comments. I'm so lazy when it comes to that. <laughs> it always bites me in the ass when I go back to old projects. <laughs> I never do it. Uh, it, it. Oh, wow, good. I put a comment there. Um, I'm trying to see where the hell I put the UI that you see when you're playing the game. Like, because that thing on the right is a menu. It, I, I'm pretty sure it's a UI window uh, with this, like, custom UI stuff that I made. So, where is it? Initialize main menu? No, that's that's the main menu. Uh, new game. Main UI init initialize game. Where? Ooh. Huh. Where did I put this? So we're looking for, oh dude, this sucks, um, cause layer one here, it seems like is the pause menu. So this is where it adds in like the stuff you, you know, your strength that you can hover over and it tells you what your strength is. Um, oh yeah, we can fix the hoverable thing over here. Um. So if X is less than or equal to mouse pause, less than X pause plus one, X pause plus len minus one. Maybe it's this minus one here. Maybe it's just len. Because they were all short by one character. So if we take off that minus one. Uh, we're using um, something called TCOD. And it, the game is just text, right? It's a roguelike. It's a traditional roguelike. Um, so it's all just rendered with text, but I, I edited one of the little, I, I grabbed a, uh, a text sheet from, uh, Dwarf Fortress, and, um, I edited one of the characters right here to be, like, a, a little slime dude, uh, a little blob-looking fella, but, uh, I just grabbed a font sheet from Dwarf Fortress, um, it's the Aniki, Aniki uh, character sheet, and so our game is just in textual mode, uh, you know. There's not really, like, Gwafisk, um, and it, to, for rendering all this stuff, it just, it uses T, T cod to make, like, a, it's not in the terminal, it's in, like, a window, um, separate from that. Gwafisk. Yeah, Dickelodeon Slime. There he is. It's him. Um, actually, I think a friend of mine made this. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember where this little slime fella came from. <laughs> I think it was a friend of mine who made it. Uh, like, a couple years ago. But yeah, so these should be... You should be able to mouse over these. And you used to be able to. I don't know what the fuck happened. It, like, stopped working. But this, right here. Race, HP, SP, Sturger, Burr, Burr, Burr. All this stuff... I need to figure out what this is, where this is getting defined in my program, so I can just snip it here at, like, the halfway point and put, like, the log, the combat log down here in the corner, um, which will eventually evolve into, like, general game action log. 
Uh, so... I could also do this into, like, thirds or something, because this doesn't really have to be very big. Like, your stats screen here, it's like, I could even cut it right here or something, you know? Or maybe show your current equipment or something, and maybe some other stuff, and just cut it, like, way up here. And we could do it in thirds, right? You know how CDDA has a map in the bottom right corner? Maybe we could add, like, a little overview mini-map thing that I, I fucking, I don't know. Um, that would actually be extremely hard to do, uh, I think, with TCOD's thing, but... Slime. Yes, yes, there is there is the little slime. Um so I need to figure out where the heck I set up that that little window on the right. I really don't know. Oh, oh here it is. <laughs> Found it. Uh it's just in a it tucked away in a function, okay. So yeah, so update UI constantly resets it. Cause if you don't you know what? I think it's yeah. If you don't reset it, if the values update, then it doesn't. It, like it doesn't update. Um, that makes sense. Uh, but anyway, so here's that. Um, it doesn't have to be massive. So where? What? Uh. Because the the window that is layers. Okay, so it's layers zero zero. Um, this is the window that they're in. Uh, where does that get? We're looking for layer zero, zero. Current floor append. Oh, right, right. Um, content line. Bit UI, yeah. So then it sets up that. But where does it say how big that box is? UI window. Is this it right here? Menu I add window. Let's see, so what is my my window class? So window is X Y width height. 70, 1949. This might be it right here. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, because X position 60, that's on the right of the screen. Okay, yeah. So this is it right here. So if we set the vertical size to, like, 15, right? All right, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, there you go. So now we can add other windows over here. Um... Okay, so update UI, that updates this part. We're probably going to have to update the, um... Probably going to have to update the, uh... The combat log window and stuff, too, in that function. Win 1. What is this one? Main UI add window. Ah, that's the layer. Uh, zero is the bottom layer. Okay. So I think if we just add another thing to zero, it'll just, like, be on the same layer. So let's go... Let's add another window. This time at position, like, 16 or something, right? Uh... And it's content. Uh, yeah, we'll just be UI content test, or when it, or it'll be this. Oops. All right, so we'll do that. Uh, yes, it is. That's what generate.py is for. It's a very simple, just bare bones algorithm, but it um. So what it does is uh, you have a random size square room. They're all just squares uh, and random positions within like a grid or whatever. Um, and it tries to place the rooms 
Um, as long as it's not like overlapping or in checking collision with other rooms and stuff. Um, and it, it loops through a, a random number of times to make rooms. Uh, and it'll like connect them with hallways and stuff. See, like it, each of these squares. Okay, see when I press space and open this up, it does work. But when I, okay, so there's, uh, okay. Something's up with the, uh, for some reason the hoverable thing doesn't work unless it's like on cheat mode and see all the level. I don't know why that is. And then if I pass turns, yeah, it's still pretty accurate. Um, they're not like in the wrong spots or anything, I think. So it seems like it does work. It's just like I did something in it. Um, it uh, flubbed it up. I don't know why it doesn't work except with uh, Fulbright, but we'll see. But yeah, so the, right now all it does is just generate this simple basic ass dungeon um, and makes like three layers so I could test going up and down stairs and stuff and that all works. So we don't have to worry about that part. Um, and then it just randomly plops enemies in there and all that, all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, here's, you know, iterates, connects them with hallways. Um, and then it generates, uh, TCOD has like a path, a star thing you can generate, which is really nice. Um, so that just takes care of that for us and has some other stuff in here. But anyways, uh, let's see. So, mm, Yeah, it's it, it. That's fair. It can be weird, um, but I wanted to. I want to push Python and see like what I can do with it. I mean, if I want to get really crazy with like uh, calculations and stuff, there's um, there's even a thing I found for Python where you can do general purpose GPU programming, which is where you you use your GPUs, uh, the the GPU hardware instead of like specifically doing anything rendering related you just tell the gpu to calculate values for you and use it like a very powerful cpu you know and just ask it for math calculations which it can do extremely well um and there's actually a thing you can get for python where you can you can compile your code and have it run cuda stuff for your gpu and use it for general purpose things and that sounds really cool and I want to I want to make a little I want to see if I can extend this project later when it's done to maybe like have some more computationally intensive things like functionality that maybe is a little bit harder for just Python by itself to do. But I can like pass off to the GPU. Um, yeah, yeah, the GPU is incredibly good at, at, at doing math, like especially doing um, uh, trig. The GPU is actually surprisingly good at doing trig. Um, so if you have a lot of trig and stuff in your game, if you incorporate this, the GPU a little bit more, it can do really well for you. Yeah, yeah. Recreate Dwarf Fort. Yeah, no. It's not going to get that far into it, but... Uh, I may actually do some general purpose GPU stuff for my senior project, because I might do something like procedural generation related for a project. Um, and, you know, the GPU would be fantastic for that. Uh, so... Depending on what kind of project I think about for my for my senior project, I might uh I might do something like that. It could be fun. Um, and then I could learn a bit more about doing that kind of stuff. <sighs> okay, so whoa 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 whoa, what are we doing? Well, step one. Um, when we initialize the game. Our combat log, is it gonna be just its own object or is it gonna be? Yeah, I think the combat log is just gonna be an object, like kind of globally. Um... So we're just gonna make our combat log here and then we're gonna plop it into 
thing. Yeah, the and SD uh, TCOD uses SDL. It's that's that's what Dwarf Fortress uses, even though it's text based. Uh, they just use an SDL renderer um, for the game, and TCOD does kind of the same idea. Uh, it's just it's rendering the text instead of just doing the console, because you get a little bit more flexibility that way. I think with uh, with stuff. But if we make our log, and now we have a log. It is logging. Now this needs self, I believe. Um, I think actually all of these need self at the start uh, when you're making a class. Yeah, yeah, they all need a reference to self at the start of the function. Um, I, I am going to school and getting a bachelor's degree in uh, computer science right now. Um, and I mean, eventually I will become a, a programmer of some level as a job, but right now I'm still in school. I still have like a couple semesters, like maybe just this semester and the next semester and I'm done, but we'll see. I might have to take one more semester, which would be kind of annoying, but you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's fun. It's This kind of stuff is fun to work on. Hmm. So if that's all the combat log is, all we have to do now is go down to... See, now this this is the part that fucking sucks and, like, drags the game down, is I'm I'm just looping over all the active, like, dudes on the floor. I, there's really, I don't think, any way I can get around this, but... Um, this is probably the worst performance part of the game, even though it does run pretty well. It's still, like, a two or three millisecond loop. Um having to loop over every single person that exists is uh, kind of cringe so <laughs> I don't know if there's like some better way I can be doing this but you know and there's also a lot of if statements but I'm not really sure how to get around that either because <laughs> it's like there's I don't know maybe there's some clever shit I can do to like trim ifs but I figure at least for now, I'm I'm gonna try to make myself not think about it for the moment until the game like starts chugging really hard and then I'll think about it. You'd like to know more others? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I ended up getting a job on campus for a little while and I learned um, CSS, CSS, uh, JavaScript, um, and uh, HTML because I was working on some stuff for a thing for my school. And then, you know, in classes and in my own time, I've all, I also know like C++ and I vaguely am aware of C Sharp because I did a little bit with Terraria mods, but I need to get back into that if I want to learn it again. Um, but yeah, it's good to know a couple things, but I mean, as long as you know the basics of like programming ideas and stuff, it's, it's not too hard to just Google the syntax of a language and just do it part-time NG, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> C flat. There you go. There's. Uh, anyways. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, our combat check is somewhere. We might have to go to. Let's see. Let's go to class actor. This is the generic class that we use for the player and for the enemies. So they're all technically the same thing as far as the game is concerned. Um, dude, Sigmoid grind set. I actually really like in Python that you can use, like, fucked up characters. Like, uh, you can use Unicode stuff in your programs and it's valid. Because, <laughs> like, I just googled sigmoid functions and just, like, copied the fucking, like, little Unicode characters for it from the website. And I was just like, yeah, here we go. Because, really, if it's for a function, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, <laughs> you don't really ever see these again except for right here. Um, but, yeah, this is for, uh, I think for... I use this for like the the curving on like the exp and the skill exp and stuff um these calculations are a bit messy because they're just like a big clump of variables i need to make these look nicer all right dude well thanks for st stopping by and uh hope you have a good sleep yeah python's great um it's really simple and that's why i wanted to work with it more and see what i could do with it um 
Here's another thing I want to work on later. Uh, like later, later. Um, is I want to have the, the, the characters in the game, like, I want them to not completely see you, especially if you're at, like, the fringe of their vision. Um, and I want it to be, like, I want there to be, to be sus, right? Like, you can be sus and maybe have a little bit of stealthiness. Because they have a vision cone, um, at the moment. Uh, enemies in the dungeon have, like, a... I forget what degree it is, um, for the cone, but they have, like, a little, a little slice of a circle that they can see in, and if you're not within that slice, they don't see you, and they, they can, they have, like, facing right here, like, based on which way they've moved, uh, they'll change direction and, like, look in that direction, so you can actually, like, if you're standing on the edge of a room, and the enemy, like, walks past you and they don't see you, then there you go, you don't get seen by the enemy. And I, I want this to become more of a feature in the game because I want it to be like you start out as like a weak ass slime and like everything basically can kill you. So you would need to like stealth around to like kind of take out the targets you can actually handle um, and stuff like that. Like, I think that sounds kind of cool. So eventually uh, I want to work more on this this uh, AI for for stuff like that. But as it is, it just doesn't do anything. And it just either, they either see you or they don't uh, at the moment. Um, okay, here's doing combat. So, <sighs> when does melee combat get called? Probably in its update function. Take step. Is this where, yeah, take step is where melee combat gets called. So take step needs to optionally return um, a thing. Finally, a reason to use invisibility. Yes, like that would be really cool because like maybe you could kill an enemy or you find a scroll or something that gives you invisibility and then you can use it and now things can't see you and then you can just kind of wander around and have an easier time until you're, you know, you got to keep an eye on your invis, it might run out. Um, yeah, you know, like that sounds cool. And I, I feel like it would be neat to try to try to get more of those like, uh, you know, those weird circumstantial or, or whatever the fuck the word is. Yeah, yeah. And maybe sound eventually, too. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go that far, but I might. I, I might fuck around to find out, you know? Um, <laughs> so. Uh, so here is melee combat. And then... So if act one is target, uh, if it's not actor zero is the player, um, mm, How the hell does melee combat happen between the enemy and the player? If act at one equals target. What the fuck? What is act? Oh. Right. That's not, that's not out of the all actor. Okay, I'm brain dead, sorry. Uh, okay, so if the tile is occupied, um, where they're trying to step, and, um, I don't know why it's act one, maybe because, uh, act zero ends up being themselves, I don't know, uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, just looking at it, so self is tile occupied, I'm actually, I, I need to, I need to understand my code again and get familiar with it. Um, check if the position coordinates given contain another actor already. So it returns dungeon.occupied at position X and Y. Um, and that returns apparently a list of like at least two elements, which is a bit strange. But where does that come from? Um, that was 
dungeon. So class dungeon. That was a thing, right? Uh, no. What is the dungeon? Is it? Oh, it must be a TCOD thing then. It's an empty list. Um, so initialize the game. Dungeon dot append. Anyways, um, so when this happens, um, I think it needs to return here. And this is when it returns, like, the string, right? Um, so I think inside of the character, the actor class, is where it generates the string for this character hit this other character because it's going to have access to all that information um it, you have your target which will include the uh what the other what you're trying to fight it has you as self and it can just take the two names and the, and the damage calculation um and plop them in so this also needs to return a string uh for the melee combat function um, so what this needs to do is it needs to return what the hell happened. So hit chance. Okay, so right, we have if RNG is less than or equal to hit chance, they hit. So um So self and actor. So now we need to we need to return. So at the end of this, because it's an if-else, so we can just safely, inside of here, return. Because we already know if if this happens, it's not going to execute anything here anyways, so we can just call the return early. Um, and we can return the string of... Back to main. So we can use this, like, fancy string variable interpretation bullshit um there's like this f string thing in python and you can use it to like incorporate variables and things into your strings so we can do we can return an f string here and what it can be is um it can be self dot probably race because that's what i'm referring to things as um, oh, well, self.name is a thing. Okay, so self.name. We'll just do that. That's easy. Self.name um, hits the uh, actor.name for uh, I guess damage yeah, we've already calculated damage. So four damage. Um, hit points. Oh, but if it's one damage, we need to say hit point. Oh, shit. <laughs> How do we do that? In Can we do that inside the F string? Can we like, can we like do a thing here? Let's look up Python F string. Uh, Python 3's F string in improved string formatting. Yes. Okay. See, I figured. Yeah, there was like an a, like a nice little clean way we can do it here, because I don't want to just use an if statement. That's silly. Um, I figure we can do it inside of the string formatting thing. Possibly. Um, maybe with regex actually. 
if it can do that. I don't know. I've, I'm not very comfortable with regex, but I believe you could probably do something like that. Uh... Multi-line F strings. Yep, 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 yep. F strings are also pretty fast. That's cool. Uh, I am M to F. If okay, so you can do okay. F string can have okay. So we just put an if else inside the F string formatting. Thank you. Yeah, using F string with depending on a condition. Um, you can nest expressions to evaluate inside expressions in an f-string. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. So the num. Uh, uh, okay. I see. So what we can do here, instead of the word hit points, is we can do another thing to evaluate. And we can tell it... Um, Flat is better than nested. Yeah. Yeah, I might as well just not nest it, because... I don't know. Like this person's saying, um, this is disgusting, and I like it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, it, it would actually probably honestly just be cleaner to, to have the if statement outside of the string. Uh, as silly as it is, you yeah, might as well. So... Just for a single thing. A pluralize method? It's not a bad idea. Uh, for now, I think, uh, we'll do just a silly little... Just a silly little if statement. You know, we'll, 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 give, it a, we'll give it the little Yandere simulator treatment. Uh, and just stuff some more if statements in there. <laughs> but, I mean, either way, like in the pluralize function, you know, we're still gonna... Ultimately, we're going to do this if check. I think no matter what, we have to check if damage is not one, you know. Uh, so, has to happen either way. So, if uh, damage not equal to one, then... Uh, can you do... Does Python support um, ternary... Because for something super simple like this, I feel like that would be probably a little bit nicer to look at. A if condition else B. Got it. Yeah, perfect. Yes, thank you. All right, so we're just going to do, um, we'll just, you know, uh, word equals hit point if damage equal to one um, else word equals hit points, right? Like, we can just do that. Um, and then just slap word in here. <laughs> and there you go. I think that'll work, right? Probably. So we'll save that. And now, now we're returning a string from our melee combat function. So, we skip on down to here. And we can actually, because we want to keep this string trucking outside of this whole thing, we can return the result of this function. And now take step is returning a string. Um, so now we return take step uh, here because we want to keep the string trucking outside of all this bullshit. Uh, okay. So take step, returns a string here. Otherwise, it just, you know, nothing, which it should be fine. Um, and then pursue target is where it calls take step, I believe. Wander also calls take step, but I don't think they actually do combat when they're wandering. So I don't think we actually have to worry about it here. in the Because wander is when the enemy has not seen the player, and they're just kind of walking around. Um... So that part, yeah, we don't. They're not going to get into combat. There won't be any logs to 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 log. Now later, they may make noises and stuff that we may want to log for the player, but we'll think about that down the road if we want to get more complex with the uh, the mechanics. So pursue target. Uh, where does pursue target get called? Um, 
Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. Right. It'll just... Okay. So it'll just swap out that chunk. Got it. Got it. Um... That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, they... I just... They the ex they didn't use an example of like assigning a value to a variable, um, in this. Oh wait, no, there it is. Okay, never mind. I just I didn't read down far enough. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, so. Uh, I believe where is I guess we can just control F for it. Um. Pursue. Oh. I believe that's actually spelled wrong, but too late now. <laughs> uh, return. All right, there's that. And then alert AI. Uh, alert AI is now the thing probably getting called in main. There it is. So, alert AI is possibly going to give us a string. Uh, so if, oh God, dude, there's so many, I hate if statements. <laughs> so if uh, this is not equal to, can we just check it against the empty string? Um, probably, right? Like, cause, well, okay. Mm -mm. What does it return if it's not, like if it's, if pursue target returns, let's just add that to be sure. I don't want to end up having some weird funkiness. So if there's a string here and combat has happened, um, we need to... We need to take our log, our combat log. And... Actually, we should just assign this to a variable so then we can append it simply. So... And then we'll just check the variable. So... Oh. Log line, and then if, if log line is not the empty string. Then we want to... I, I, I didn't need to make this, but <laughs> we're going to use it because I made it. <laughs> okay, so now the combat log... Okay, I also need to see what is printing to the console because that's getting really annoying. I think it's this. Let me not do that. Because I want to try to just, I think, print this to the console um, each time that happens. And that way we can see if not X. Oh, yeah, maybe. Run. Oh, it's crashing. Oh, boy. I changed too much. Um... Okay, so what are we crashing here? Yeah, I'm running main. Yeah, it's just... Okay, so something is causing a crash now. There you go, yeah. Explicitness. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, This should return an empty string if it gets down here, I guess. That might be why the crash is happening. No, it's crashing on like the main menu so it's not even getting to this code really unless something about what i've written here is like actually not okay um it's having a crash before it even gets to the main menu why are you doing that what did i do hmm Let 
Maybe there's just something wrong with my actor class here, like, with what I've done. Um... This seems fine. Maybe this one needs to have a fallback empty string. No, it's still still breaking. Uh, what did I do wrong? Put this over. So we have. Maybe this is wrong. How does how does it work? I you just put a variable name in there, really. That's all you gotta do. Um hmm. mm. So self dot name actor dot name yeah we can act we should be able to access actor dot name the damage and word are here that should be fine um I mean I don't think this matters but I highly doubt that matters at all. No, it just, it just, uh, I don't know if you can see it at the bottom flashing. When I try to run my main.py, uh, it just instantly closes, which is not what it did before. <laughs> so, <laughs> returning these functions and stuff seems to have broken my video game. Um, let me not return these functions directly for a moment and see if maybe that fixes things a little bit um, and just do an empty string for, for now. Because I think there may be something weird going on with my... Uh... I, I do vaguely use Git. Um, yeah, that would be a good idea, so I can, like, roll back changes, but, uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't have it set up for this project. I, I was lazy, and I made this project a couple years ago before I even started using GitHub. Um, so we're gonna have to do it the old-fashioned way of not doing what we were doing. <laughs> I didn't change that much. Uh, ah, here we go. Okay, still crashing. So it was alert AI. We just return an empty string. Um, hmm. What the heck did I do? That time it got past initialization, uh, but then crashed when it got to the, the thing. Is it because it's returning... Okay, hold on. Let's get rid of these for now, because apparently shit's breaking.
It doesn't make any sense to me, but such is life, I suppose. No. What what did I do? How did how did this break? I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh no. What happened? Uh Oh, you silly, silly game. What are you doing? Yeah, maybe this stuff is the culprit. No. You for gore. Welcome. Blech. What if I just control Z a whole bunch? I mean, VS Code carries a very long undo chain, I believe. Well, it actually remembers a ton. Uh... It could be the returns I've tossed in. Like, because maybe Python doesn't work the way I think it does with that. Okay, it's still broken. Um... Okay, I I just undid all my changes and it's still crashing, so I don't know what's going wrong now. Comment you out? What the fuck? Why is that cr It does, like, nothing! What? What's wrong with the law? <laughs> Why is this crashing? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make it. Is it because I forgot the parentheses? Am I stupid? Is that. Maybe I'm just dumb and I, I, I forgot the parentheses. Maybe that's why it's crashing. No. What, why doesn't this work? What did I do wrong with my class? Net self. I mean, I guess, but. I'm not like. Like, it should be. Class underscore log as log. Class underscore log dot py. Right there. It's, it's, I assume it's importing. It's the same as my other imports. Um, and then I use log dot the name of the cl- Oh! I'm brain dead. So stupid. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I'm an idiot. <sighs> Why do I do this? Okay, well now we go back through. <laughs> you can waste points and request a game. Hell yeah, dude. So first I'm just going to add the returns and give them their empty string types. Um, and then we'll go back through and we'll make sure this works. Because, I mean, this part should actually be fine. I think the only the only problem is I was just dumb and named it the wrong class name. <laughs> I think that was it. Uh, this one needs to return that. And then... I keep wanting to add semicolons because I have a class in C++ this semester. <laughs> it's just 
force of habit. Oh wait, it's already running, isn't it? Get out of here. Okay, so now it's crashing again. Um... Okay, so I know it's not this. <laughs> um, let me comment this out for now. Okay, so I need to give it duh, an initial value or else it's just like, how am I supposed to compare to that? It doesn't exist. Yeah, C++ is not bad. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I think C Sharp is better as just like a random user person who's making like simple things. Um, C Sharp is just kind of better in most ways. But, you know, it depends on what you're doing. As, as most things in life depend on. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's just, yeah, we initialize things. Just initialize it to an empty string. No, it still breaks. What? Huh. Why does this break? Is it is it the parentheses? Does does Python hate parentheses? No, that's not it. Um, yeah, how do I do that? Do you know how to, how I do that with VS Code? Oh, you, duh, I'm the fucking staring at it right here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty rusty on Python. It's been a bit. Uh, I don't use Python for my classes or anything. So like, if I don't do little projects like this, I just don't use it. And syntax is hard to remember. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Brain fog is clearing a little bit. Okay. Fair enough. Debugging configurations for Python apps and Visual Studio Code. Um... I guess that's what I need, or is it? No. Yeah, debugging. Okay. Yeah. It's only 50 megs. That's not bad. I, I really like this about VS Code. This is actually super handy to just be able to like, oh, I need this extension for this project I'm working on. Bip, 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 bip. Install it, and it's just like good to go. Uh, I already have Python. I, I don't need Python. Thank you. Um. Ah, so, select main. Okay, we, okay, cool. Now we have it working in, in here. There we go. Now make a game in Unity. You know, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I'm not a fan of Unity as, as an IDE. Um, personally, I don't, okay, how do I? Uh, I guess if I control C or something in the terminal, I can like end it without having a Godot is better. I tried to use Godot a little bit, but I it's it's got a way different UI and stuff than I'm used to in any other game dev environment. So I really have to put some time into Godot to see if it's like something I want to actually get used to and use more. Um, I mean, it seems cool. Like I, I like those kind of game dev environment things. Uh, they're really nice to have. Uh, IDEs, um, but I just haven't put any time into Godot, 
Uh, I think I have it downloaded, like an old version or something, but I just never used it for anything yet. Okay, anyways, now that we've gotten past our baby level grammar syntax mistakes, um, let's actually do the stuff. Why is word highlighting? What? Okay, fine. I'll call it word with a capital D. No, that's even worse. <laughs> oh, thank you for the follow. Hope you're enjoying uh, my struggles. Closest thing you've either used is Roblox. I mean, you know, it's technically an IDE. It's just uh, Roblox abstracts a lot more out for you so you don't have to like actually program anything or do the heavy lifting. Um, like, the concept behind Roblox is nice, but I don't know if you've ever seen videos on it, but, like, uh, why does this keep highlighting? I, what? Okay, whatever, we're gonna name it word. Um, uh, like, the concept is sound, but Roblox as a company and their business model and everything is, like, just absolutely terrible. Uh... Enemies are always, like, just their class name. They don't have names. Hmm. Unless there's a named enemy at some point. I will cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, hit the name for damage. Hit points. Else. Get rid of that. All right, cool. So now we have this. Um, let's. Uh, okay, the game runs. I I actually can't exit the game from in here. Oh my god! Stop printing that, please. <laughs> For the love of God! Did I not get rid of that? Get get out of here. <laughs> All right, uh, actor. Default player model is like a big dumb knockoff Lego guy, and you can't get over that. Yeah, that's super funny. Bat, 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 bat. <laughs> that's our game. It just prints bat at like mock speed in the console. That's all you need. Um, let's put this stuff into the returns. Take step. Yeah, I really should put this into GitHub. That would be such a good idea. Okay, so take step. Pursue target calls take step. Melee combat is called by the... Take step calls melee combat. And then pursue target is called by alert AI. Get out of here. Um... There it is. Alright, fall back empty string. And F5. We're not, we need to print it to the console, or else we're not going to be able to see if it's actually working. Um, let's just print, right? Where are the dudes? Yo! Why does it say test? Why is her name test? 
Okay, it doesn't log our combat, but it does log the enemy's combat, and that's important. Uh, let's see if it can handle... Okay, yeah, it does handle two at once. So, abstract number of enemies, solved. Um, I still need to, f I need to fix up the enemy AI and stuff because they kind of just stand behind each other and everything. But again, that's, to me, that just seems like polish. Like, as long as it's working, I think it's fine for now. Um, I also got to fix this spacebar thing to the mouse over them. Um, okay. So now I need to see, what do we do about the player's combat? Um, ah, because it's coming out of alert AI. So, where is it doing the player's inputs? Player input. So, for actor and actors, we render. This is, I, is at, the actor at zero is the player. That's why it just renders, and then it does the AI for all the other actors. Um, but where is the player's movement code? When does that get called? Key switcher. So here's the switch statement for Python. Very funky, but it works. Um, handle movement. Aha. Handle movement. Move player. Check melee. There we go. So these need to return... Um, here it is. If... We are actor zero. Uh, go ahead and return the string from return. What's wrong with your formula? Um, what language are you doing this in? Is this in Python? Yeah. So, like Cami just said, if you're if you want to like do stuff with two different variable types. Your, your W is a string. Um, if A is digit, B equals int A. I mean... Oh, yeah, for the slide. Yeah, so your, your W is a string, and you're trying to divide an, a number by a string. Um, so... <laughs> right, so what happens is uh, when you input your age, I don't think it's a digit because I don't know what the is digit function does, honestly, off the top of my head. But I mean, it's probably just giving you a string for A. Um, and then you have A as a string, so B never gets set to anything. And I don't know. It can be a little funky. Um, what are we doing? Uh, right. So... Oh, these are... Oh, mm, because of the way I'm doing this, this may actually be kind of hard to, uh... Get your, yeah. yeah, see? Because of the way I'm handling the movement with this, like, weird lambda function thing to do, like, a, a switch statement without being able to do a switch statement, um, I don't know if I can, like, get my strings out of here correctly for the player. Because the function string that it calls... I don't know. I How the fuck does this work? So... The switcher is a dictionary. K up. I think what's happening... I, I don't know what's happening. I don't think. <laughs> I just copied this a long time ago and was like, yeah, that works. Okay, I'm not going to think about it any harder. Maybe this is a bad... Is this bad to do? Like, because I wanted to do a switch statement for the keys and stuff so I could just call functions easily. Um, calculate weight. Uh, brother manages to blue screen the PC by playing on Congregate. Amazing. 
Yeah, is digit sounds like, well, yeah, and he's using it if A is a digit, so that he is using if it's true, then do this. Um, but, yeah, so you're going to have to take the input, um, and I, your input's probably a string. So you're going to have to turn that input into a number. So you could, I don't know if you can cast your input into integer. Like, when you put um, B equals int A, maybe just get, uh, change your is digit. Because I don't know if is digit is returning true there. Maybe do something else. I don't know. I don't know what you'd have to do. Um, every time I solve stuff like this, I do it differently just based on my mood at the moment. So it's, it's I mean, whatever you feel like is the correct decision, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay, so how do I do this? Because you see these functions are returning these, like, particular strings, right? Um, move down, move up. Uh, lambda unknown. So what is the arg? Arg! Uh, I think they're just using the literals here. The TCOT event. Uh, let's see. Key switcher. Handle user input. Key switcher. Um, and then enemy turns. Okay. Yeah, so the key switcher itself... Okay, these are just... These are just labels. These don't actually... These don't actually matter. Okay, yeah. So we can... Yeah, we can just return the string here. Okay. I'm, I'm overthinking it. Uh, okay, so handle movement. So check melee. Um, will get us our string for melee. Otherwise... I don't know, empty. Um, and then... So if check so if the player can actually move they move you know no logs but else um we're gonna need to return whatever check melee returns i think yeah because handle movement yeah we need to return the string here from handle movement so handle movement needs to have like string uh, well let's not name it string because that's silly um Let's just name it log line again. I think. Unless... No, because it's in a function. That should be fine. So we'll return that. And then... From here... Uh, I'm going to have to change all these, but... Such is life, I suppose. <laughs> Chrome is dog water. Well, such is life. I don't use Chrome. I use Firefox, but Firefox is also maybe not great. I don't know. I don't know what browser I like the most. I I used to use Opera a lot. Um, uh, when I had this old laptop that was like super, super low specs, you know, it was like half a gig of RAM and uh, 1.6 gigahertz like Celeron M. And uh, Opera was a godsend for that laptop. The only good one is Lynx. I don't think I've used Lynx. Uh, I hope it doesn't give me Lynx disease. But fucking Opera was amazing. Like I remember, like any other browser in that on that laptop would lag and just like not be able to play YouTube videos, not be able to do anything. And Opera ran flawlessly it, it was so impressive i don't know how they did it but like newer versions of opera don't do it anymore yeah nowadays it's chromium so it's not good anymore um but opera used to be like the most performant like bare bones browser i'd ever used and it could run on like the worst computer of your you've ever seen in your life uh it used to be insane it, opera was fucking cracked dude <laughs> it was such a good browser back in the day like 2000 mid 2000s you know like i that was amazing uh but yeah i don't know what they did to it they ruined it uh i guess chromium is a disease that is infecting browsers um but yeah i mean ultimately it doesn't matter now that everybody has like 16 to 32 gigs of ram and like insane processors and stuff so like whatever but it still kind of sucks like 
I, I wish people weren't I, like I, optimization is cool do it <laughs> but like people feel like they don't have to anymore so it's like nothing get, gets optimized um so yeah so it'll either be unknown or it'll be our log so if uh now we just do another log line i guess uh, uh Opera GX. Yeah, I don't know anything about Opera GX. I know YouTubers get paid to shill Opera GX, but I I don't pay attention when they do that, so I don't know any... And, like, they don't really... You know, they're, they're not talking about, like, the technical aspects of it. So, there's never any useful information I get about it, and I just... I've never gone out of my way to look it up. Um... Maybe it's not a good idea to reuse the same variable, but it should be fine. I mean, it's either going to be unknown or it's going to be a thing. Actually, no. It's not. It's... Oh, shit. It's... Uh... Because, like, there's other functions in here that the player can do, right? Um... And these return their own literals that are not like a combat log thing to return. And then if these are empty, right? Like if it just returns an empty string. Meh. <laughs> uh, I set this up in a weird way that's kind of making this a bit more annoying. Because idling and these functions uh, return something that isn't unknown, but it's also not an empty string. I mean, I could set them to empty string, I guess. I mean, just, it's not like we need them to return their name, so. It could either be, and then unknown could just be the empty string as well. Like, there's no reason not to, right? What do I, I'm just going to expand these, why not? It's more to scroll through, but whatever. So if we just make everything empty, um, it's not bad. It does mean all the Chromium browsers are basically the same stuff. Yeah, that's true. Same shit, different smell. You got any your shit PC? It runs way better than Chrome. Oh well, hey, that's good. I mean, if it if it does run better, I, I think a lot of things run better than Chrome because Chrome is just like bloated, and isn't really well optimized. Um, okay, so now we should just be able to check it against the empty string. Again. So, this should work. Start. Up. Oh. What happened? Exception has occurred. Unbound. Right. Yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? Um, whoopsies. <laughs> kind of forgot about that. Uh, okay, yes, I know. I can, can, can I make this go away? Um, these also should... Blech. It's gross to have to do this. I really should have had, like, maybe one... F I don't know. I just did it this way because, like, that's how setting up switch statements and stuff works in Python. And maybe I could have done this a little bit better. But... Such is life. Okay, this is now frozen. How do I... I think it was just hanging. Oh, you know what? It was just telling me that because it was, like, hanging the program. It didn't actually crash it, but... Uh... Yeah, whatever. I, I kind of would rather it just closes. Um, yeah, we don't need that breakpoint anymore. We we have fixed it. I believe. Check melee. Yeah, this this one's fine. 
Okay. F5. New game. We're not... Oh, we're not printing it to the console. What am I thinking? Oh, I hear, I hear police sirens. Uh-oh, somebody's in trouble. It's a fucking... I don't think I got it. There's like a, there's like a fucking bug, like a gnat or something flying around. I thought I could clap it and get it out of here. But I think I totally missed. Um... I hate bugs. Get me out of here. Get me out! Uh-oh. This game loop's taking longer than usual. It's like up to six or seven milliseconds. Is that all from just the dumb bullshit I added? Did it really slow it down that much? I'm gonna be super upset if that's the if that's what's happening. I can't close this. Yeah, we lost a couple milliseconds out of the game loop. Just from the stuff I added. That's crazy. Okay. There you go. It's working. I like how we're just hitting him and he hasn't looked at us, so he doesn't he just died. He's like, huh, I'm dying. I don't what's going on? He's just dead. Um So it worked. Uh, and we got our experience and all that fun stuff. Maybe. That's that's kind of part of why I wanted to work on this, is just to see how much I can... Like, what kind of performance issues you run into with Python and how to overcome those performance issues. Nice. Thank, hello, Wargun. Thank you for the emote. <laughs> if it has its own search engine. Nice. We're good. Gotta get that eBay search in, dude. Yeah, so we, we lost a lot of stuff out of our game loop. I don't know what that's from. I'm assuming what it's from. Maybe I'm wrong. Using Rust, it's pretty cool. I, I've heard some stuff, people mention Rust before. Uh, it seemed interesting, I suppose. So I assume what's happening is... I mean, it could be the if statements... But I feel like just one more if statement here is probably not tanking the performance that much. Like, I can't imagine this is the difference between, like, multiple milliseconds per loop, right? So if we comment this out, um, I bet you the, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's still, it's still five to six to seven, somewhere in that range. Um, I feel like it actually might be marginally better, but... Uh, What we can do, um, because right now we're call this is just another check we call on all the actors, um, on the current floor, which can be a decent amount of them, um, but we only, I mean, we only, it actually doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get called unless it's, uh, oh wait, no, no, yeah, it, it gets called every time. Uh, the game isn't paused, yeah. If it's... Oh, but it only... I think it only happens... It doesn't happen every time it loops. Maybe. Yeah, I don't think this happens... Constantly. Maybe it does. Well, it only happens when it's their turn. Uh, so this only really runs once when they move. So yeah, this isn't really a problem. This doesn't get run like ever. I I guess what really changed was me returning functions as values. And that dr that lost me some milliseconds. That was the biggest change so far. Except for, I guess, this. Because um, Key Switcher, I believe, is running constantly. So maybe it's this one, actually, that's that's chewing up. And it's also printing to console. Well, but that only happened... I don't know. Maybe this is what ate up some milliseconds 
Uh, music is a uh, chill game music mix or whatever. And it's still up at five. Hmm. Interesting. I did, really didn't change that much and I lost performance. And it's not these if statements, so the ifs are okay. Uh, we're not we're not Yandere Simulator just yet, but is Python like if you return a function as a value in Python? Does, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would that be worse performance? Maybe it's this, but that's not being run until they actually do melee combat. Nothing's even really happening. I. I really didn't touch anything that is happening in, like, the, the normal game loop. Like, every frame, you know? Um... Because this doesn't even run until there's a key event, so this just gets skipped. Um... And this doesn't run until it's their turn in combat. Yeah. I, I just... It's weird. Like, what did I do that lost me like two milliseconds out of nowhere. That, that's just super strange. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting too distracted. Uh, I have no clue what it was. We'll figure it out one day. Um, so we have a combat log. Now we need to display it in the video game. So um, we need it to render bottom up, I think, maybe. And then we never figured it out. The end. <laughs> we, we can do like a whole hardcore profiling thing later if the game loop starts taking longer than, um, what is it for 60 FPS? Uh, like 12 milliseconds or something? I, f I forget. Uh, if, if we start getting slow, we'll, we'll actually profile it and stuff, but you know, it's just, it was just, I, it caught me off guard because I wasn't expecting anything I did to really impact the performance. Um, very, very strange. Anyways, um... So we don't need to print a console anymore, we know it works. So now what we need to do, inside of Update UI... Pass the combat log. And then... Okay, I already made a function that'll pretty much handle what we need. Um, Okay, so this second, this is the window number to target. So we need to do main UI layers zero And then what happens? Oh no! Huh? What did I do? Uh... What? Excuse me? Oh, right, because I changed I changed the uh, update UI and I didn't update it everywhere else. So, update UI. Uh, 
combat log here is just, there's nothing. You, you've just started the game. Unless we want the combat log to be saved with the game data, but, well, I, for now, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it can just be blank. Shit. Um, oh, right. Here we go. Can we, can we have five it? Oh, it just closes. Text log has no lin. <sighs> right, the text log we need we don't we don't pass it the combat log itself, we pass it um Combat logs text. Silly me. Oh god. What the fu- what do you mean? How is it missing its arguments? What are you talking about? Um... What? How did this break it? New game button shouldn't even... What do you talk? Excuse you. Um... Hello? Well, it, it was working before. It just did it. I, like, however I had it set up was working until I changed the number of arguments on this function. That's the only reason it's spitting out an error now. So something went wrong with update UI. And I think it has to do with the main menu being in here right now. Well, I'm glad you found it, Turtle. Um, So it's... No, you can't, yeah. Continue, it just dies. Um... So handle input. When I, when I click on... For some reason, it says it's missing positional arguments. Why? new game well, why was it working before what what happened here what did I what the heck how did this just suddenly break <laughs> all these fun new problems uh what 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 went wrong Like, I know this code works because I use it in the game. Well, not only has it been the same code the entire time here uh, for the main menu and stuff, but it also is the same code inside the game for, like, the clickable tabs in the game menu. Um. Oh, it's saying, okay, it's saying new game button missing. So, for some reason, it stopped calling this function with its arguments. 
Even though it was doing that before. Uh, why did it break? Is the question. Wait, where is its args coming from? Load save. Wait. How was this working before? Specialize <laughs> main menu. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So, main UI function is the new game button function. Its arguments are these. Um, yeah, so it was working. Initialize main menu. I don't have any funkiness in here. And then... Oh, you know what? It's probably like replacing stuff with the, uh... With the, uh... Update UI function, maybe? Well, no, because that's if the state is game. So that shouldn't break anything. Because it should switch to game mode first and then do the stuff. Because it doesn't break until I... Until I click on it. And then it breaks. Because it tries to call new game button missing six arguments. Basically, yeah. I just didn't want to type out, st so I just did, like, I wanted to make it so I could add whatever I wanted into my menus to do whatever I wanted them to do. So I have a generic object, right? Uh, you can add these clickable things to your, your UI. And clickables can have a function and arguments assigned to them. Um, called partial? Hmm. I just, I don't know why this was working before and now it's not. I don't know, what's wrong with it? Hmm. That's weird. That's weird. Like, what I wonder... I wonder if... It's replacing something before it resolves the function call, somehow. But that wouldn't really make any sense. I... Let's see, yeah. Um, how do we... So debugger. Here's... Okay. Call stack, handle input, special variables, class clickable object args wait those aren't args those are actors what? okay something is definitely going wrong We have three clickable objects. Yeah, so start new game. Look at this. It's args is the list of actors. How did that get set that way? What did that? So for some reason, this right here is getting replaced with a list of actors. What the fuck? How did that happen? Uh, I assume that's why it's going wrong, because it's... The list of actors is not the arguments for this function. <laughs> but what did I change that made that happen? That's the weird part. Hmm. So 
So the clickable at zero here is the one that get that get funked up. The other ones still work fine. The other ones uh, still have their args okay. No, they don't. These ones also say actor. What the fuck? This one also gets overwritten with whatever this is. Unless... Oh, wait, no. I'm stupid. Yeah, no, that is the... Yeah, that is correct. I'm so dumb. Yeah, so that that is the arg. Um, okay, so I'm... I'm stupid. Uh, we have the list of actors, the list of races. We have the, the dungeon, which is a class map. So it's a map. Yeah, that's that's good. Current floor is zero, which is yeah, that's just a number. Uh, main UI is the UI object. OK, that's correct. Yeah, no, that is correct. Um, con is the TCOD console object, which OK, that is correct, too. And camera is a camera object. Uh, the length is seven. But the length should be six. That's what I'm getting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven arguments here. What do you mean it's missing six of them? It says it's missing races, dungeon. Okay, so it says it's missing everything after actors. So the only argument it's aware of is this one. And it it says there's no other arguments after actors, even though they are here. I can see the stupid bug on the wall. Do I have a fly sweater in here? I bet I do. I thought I did. Oh, I don't see it. Man, I want to get rid of that bug. I'm going to use my shoe. I can't hit him because he's in the corner. There we go. That's good. All right, anyway. So, what's going on here? It was like a, I don't know if, I don't think it was a mosquito, but it was like a particularly large like gnat or something. I don't know. Uh, those randomly make their way into my room. My window isn't like sealed perfectly. There's all sorts of cracks around it because it's old and the, the, the net on the outside of the window is also kind of torn. I mean, I assume, but is that not what this is doing? Oh my god, can you can you not do this right now? Um, is that not what this does? Like, if you call a function, like dot function, which gets replaced with the name of the function, and then this gets replaced with the arguments, is that's what I was doing before, and it was working. Why did it stop working? That's what I'm so confused about. Because, like, I didn't change any of the code associated with the new game button. And I think I looked this up and somebody said, like, you could do stuff like this. So I, I did it this way. Yeah. So, you know, it tries with this. And in the exception, it does this. I don't remember exactly what the difference between these lines is. But, um, you know. If it's a clickable, it has to have a function tied to it, basically. I think. Uh, or something along those lines. Um, but anyways, so... What happened? What'd it do? Oh, where is it? Okay, so it's failing here. It's trying, but then it's running the exception case. And I guess the exception case doesn't get all the arguments correctly. Um, so is... Uh, what can we determine from this? From us playing audio. Well, virus is solid black, great notification.
Yeah. Okay. What? So it's it's catching an exception here when it tries this one then. Um How do we look at that? Do you know? Is there a you might not. Um break points. Uh Python VS code check exception. I guess we need to recode it so it like prints the exception, right? Like um no, I don't want linting. Except E. So you just put an E there and then print E. Is that what you mean? It kind of gives me a squiggle. E is not defined. You're not defined. Um, what do I, okay, uh, print exception plus E. How do I define E? Do I just do that? No. What's, uh, exception? Is it just like that? I'm just gonna print E. Uh, I don't know. My code broke and... Handling an exception, another exception occurred. Um, oh, is this the exception? Catching classes that do not inherit from base exception is not allowed. Wait, no, that no, that's a different. That's that I. That's my code right here not working. Um. Oh. Gotcha. So except exception as e. There we go. All right. Do we do you got an exceptions and exceptions? It's fucking exceptionally programmed. Oh, now my code doesn't run anymore. Uh. Uh oh. Stinky. Exception inception. Wait, what? I'm so confused. Okay. Python exception handling. Python exception print or Yeah, I mean it says accept exception as e print e. That's what they're saying this works in Python 3. Um That's how you do it. So wh why does it want to be a but We could also try importing the traceback module, but like, I don't know. That's weird. Why? 
I mean, that's what people say is the way to do it. Um... Yeah, accept exception as E. That's what everyone is on, on Stack Overflow is saying. That's how you do it. Um... I don't know why, unless that exception it popped up with is the one I'm looking for. Well, now it's, yeah, now the game just doesn't run since I did this. Uh, and it, it's not printing anything. I think it's trying, oh wait, I'm running the wrong file. I'm stupid, Never mind. Ignore me, I'm dumb. Um, list object has no attribute text. Wait, what do you mean? What list object? Wait, where? What? What? List object has no attribute text? Excuse me? Who is- what does that have to do with this at all? Handle input. Oh, that's in class UI, duh. Um, right, well, that's where we are. Um, so handle input for the window when we click on a clickable. It's giving us list object has no attribute text. Uh, they said you can actually get a stack trace thing if you import trace back. We could do that real quick just to get a little bit more detail here. Um, Actually, let's uh, put it in here, because that's where we need it. Okay. So if we use traceback, it says you can do this, and then traceback print x. Yeah, so let's try that and see what exactly is going wrong here. Um, so, in new game button, initialize game. Oh yeah, see? So, for some reason, I guess it's... It must be overwriting it, like, in the stack or, like... like what it's doing here, basically, is it's calling update UI, which is overwriting the current, like, object that is running this function. And I believe that's what's breaking it. Um, so we need to call update UI after this function is, like, done. We don't need, we don't need to call it instantly, I think. Because initialize game is what's breaking. And I think if we just cut update UI, well, what's okay? So here's what's happening, right? Um, main UI layer, uh, where's update? Okay, so main UI layer zero one is what we're in, right? Zero one is is what we're using, I think, when we're calling, um, when we're yeah, see right here, uh. Wait, no, those are in zero, zero. I, I, I don't know. Something funky is happening when it initializes game and, like, overwrites the main UI layers and stuff. And it's, like, breaking everything. Even though it was fine before. So let's just take update UI out. Um... And just maybe let it update UI in the game loop, because it's going to do it after this function's done, because it's going to set state to game. 
and then we're gonna be gaming. And then once it's inside of this if statement, then it will call update UI. So maybe if we do it that way, it'll work and it won't like interrupt things and like overwrite the stuff and make it think it's missing arguments and stuff. Yeah, so. Um. Hey, look at that. I mean, it's way too long for the, for the thing, but we are logging text. It is working. Um, so let's go ahead and interrupt. I need a way to exit the game in the game. I don't, I don't know why I never made that. Um, yeah, so that, that works just fine. Um, so now what we can do, uh, let's see. A modern game where you have to close it with task manager. Yeah, you gotta go, you gotta go interrupt the process just to exit the game. None of your keys on the keyboard work. Not even Alt F4 will save you. That's that's a good game feature right there. I think a lot of people will really enjoy that. Uh, and it'll be a big hit. Nobody's done this before, really. <laughs> um, okay, so... Now that we got that, uh, we need to... We need a way to format a line so it doesn't go even further beyond. Um, the problem is, here's the problem. Each line of the window also includes like the border, although it does print that separately. Um, hmm. I suppose what we could do is make a game with a transparent background then it looks like a regular window inside, but you close it, it just comes back 10 seconds later. Yeah, there you go. Turn to eight. Nice. Well, hey, at least your tablet's still working, right? Um, so what we can do is when we, when we have content inside of a window that needs to be rendered, um, we can have a little function that kind of wraps it to the width of the window, right? Um, we could probably use a map function on the, uh, the array, although that may go wrong. Terribly, terribly wrong. Because we need to, like, take the extra, cut it, and insert it into the next position in the array and keep doing that. Um, or really, we just need to do it when the content is added. Although, we don't really add the content, we just push it to this, you know, we blindly just add the lines. So if we're going to format these lines, we have to do it inside the window, I think, when we... Uh, right here. So, when we set the text inside of this window as its, as its displayable content, um... I don't think we want to format it in render, because then we're formatting it over and over again. When really, we can just format it in the array once, like when it gets updated or something. Um, we can just call like a function like format text. Uh, although that's gonna get called every frame, so we're gonna need to make sure we call it specifically when we need it to happen. Um, but yeah, uh, so is that content? We could have a format function in here. Battery lasts almost 4x longer if only batteries didn't slowly die. Yeah, an eight, having an eight-year-old tablet is, is pretty impressive. A lot of tablets that are that old uh, were really not designed to last that long because like, they want you to buy new ones anyways. <laughs> Planned obsolescence, I, I don't know. I guess it depends on if it's Apple. Apple tends to do that a lot. Uh, so we need to have a format function, right? And what the format function can do is um, we can iterate. Uh, FG 
RGBG. What? Oh, those are like the colors for each line as well. Um. Dang. See, regular desktops don't last that long. Dude, I had a laptop. My old laptop I was talking about lasted me a good decade. Um, actually, it was it was more like. Oh God, how long did that last? I got it in about 2005. Ish to no, I got it in 2007. So I got a I got my laptop in 2007. And it lasted me. Okay, it wasn't it wasn't 10 years exactly, but. It lasted me probably about seven, eight years. Um, the only reason it didn't really work anymore is because it like it started having this weird stuttering in the desktop everywhere. I reinstalled Windows, completely, you know, wiped everything, and it, it had this just weird stuttering. I think maybe it had to do with like I, I don't know what it had to do with actually, but uh, yeah, that was the only reason I stopped using that old laptop. Tablet is no longer supported by the YouTube app. <laughs> Dude, the YouTube app is bad anyways i never use it i use uh i use this uh app that's probably stealing my personal data called y music that just like it gives you all the features of youtube red without having to pay for youtube red did i smash it no it's still sitting around uh i was gonna try to fix it and see if i could figure out why it was like doing that weird stuttering and stuff but i just never did um so it's just kind of chilling doing nothing But yeah. So we have a width that we need to format for. And that's really all we have to care about is just the width. And yeah, the, the problem is the formatting. Maybe we should have format inside of the log actually, instead of here. Because we only need to format when we add a new line. Like each new line needs to be formatted. So maybe we do it here, format line. And you give it a width, so if width is greater than zero, or, well, one. Wait, no, you, I mean, you could format it a single character, that's fine. So if width is greater than zero, um, is there, like, should we just do a for loop, or is there a way to, like, is the, you can do iterable stuff in Python, right? I think I did that for some other stuff. But it looks like I'm just using for loops everywhere, so we'll just keep doing that. Um, put an RTX card in it. Your tablet is still $200. I see. Very interesting. Um, okay, so for, for each line in self.txt, I don't know, I just put that there so it stop doing squiggles. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take the line and we want to test it, right? We need to know if the len is it len of line? Is that how you get length in Python? If that's greater than width. Um if the length of the line is too long, we need to snip it and insert it into the array right after the first line. Coloring is relaxing. Yeah, coloring's cool. Uh, I haven't done it since I was a kid, but it was pretty chill. Specific UI window that you can give lines of text to it, and it keeps the text but sets its content to a wrapped version. Um, damn, you write. You write. Okay. Yeah, that's actually probably a better idea. So let's just cut and paste this. Um... Oh, maybe we just do uh, a um, a different type of content, like rap content, like R A P. Like there you go. That maybe that maybe that would make more sense, right? Because the window itself is just going to be a window. The window doesn't change. It's the content that has to change. So you either have regular content, which is just you know line by line, do whatever, or you have wrapped content, which can. Like, take whatever you shove in there and just, like, kind of make sure it fits. Yeah, okay. So, w I think we want to extend this class, because we still want... 
Well, no, let's just make a new one. I, I don't remember how to extend classes anyway, so I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't know, like, I kind of still want the initialization function at least, but I, I think I just need to replace this. Um... Right? Can we just do that and just redefine this? Python in... Python inheritance. That's not how you spell it, but whatever. Wait, yeah, it is. Okay, never mind. I spelled it right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you just put it in parentheses. So now we just need to redefine add line. Because when we, when you add a line to wrapped content, you want to make sure at that point in time is when you, um, when you do the thing, I think. I don't know, actually. <laughs> I never got my inheritance. <laughs> the price your talent gone up $40. It's uh, a collector's item. I don't know. Actually, I kind of just, it, I don't even think it need, it, none of, uh, <laughs> I, I don't even think the in, init function really works here except for this part, but like, we just need to do so much different with wrapped content that I don't think we can really inherit anything. We would just overwrite it all anyways, so it's like, what's the point, you know? Because like, Oh, actually, hold on. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So, what I'm trying to think about here is like, so we have we have our list. Uh, let me see if drawing it out in paint helps me like shape my ideas better. Uh, so, right, we have our list of our combat log, which is, like, line, two, etc. Um, and what we do with content right now what we do with just like plain whatever stuff that we're doing here is we're taking it and we're basically just making a duplicate of it um into contents lines here and it's the same exact you know the same exact list like we just we, we duplicate it over and i'm pretty sure now i i think python just makes a copy right um, I don't know if it actually does or if it just like references the original thing. I forget exactly how Python works under the hood. Um, but we're basically copying it over and having like, we have the log and then we have what's inside of content. Now, what I'm thinking, because we have this function add line, right? Um, which appends, which it does the append appendicitis already. Um, what we could do instead is we have this and instead of just duplicating it over and like doing whatever we can call when we call um push line to add it like with a with a new thing when we want to like plus a new line we can call like the log uh push and then we can call like the window content add line. So instead of having to copy over, they're non-fungible. Dude, NFT. <laughs> God, I hate that that's like the thing. Uh, right, right. So. But what I'm thinking, instead of, like, having just a straight-up copy of it, 
we just let the add line function of this take care of like our our formatting needs and like inside of this function of add line is then where it's going to call like line dot you know format and so if the window is calling the formatting on its content um, the window can, you know, use its own width and, like, pass that down. Uh, okay. Yeah, that would, I think, make more sense. And then we could inherit from this. But we're just gonna have to... You know. You know. You know how it is. Uh, that way we don't have to redefine an initialization, because this can just be identical. It doesn't matter on the init. Um, I think, but then if we do this, that will, like, overwrite what it inherited, right? With its own original content. Um. And that way, when we call wrap contents add line, it runs this instead of this. Um. I need to comment more. Class for text that wraps onto new lines inside of window boundaries. Okay. Um, perfect. So, we need that, and we need... Oh, shit. I lost the, the formatting thing. That's fine. Uh, we'll just start over. Okay, and I think we still want to pass in the width. Um, so if width greater than zero. I need to comment more. Mood. <laughs> yeah, really. How good is it? 3600 lithium ion battery. It's, uh, you know, that's, that's actually a really easy question. A 3600 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, when it's new, will provide you on a full charge 3,600 milliamps per hour. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, I don't... Is is milliamp hours capacity, or is that like... I forget. I wish. <laughs> no, that's just like... Infinite energy. <laughs> Milliamp hours, that, that is capacity, isn't it? Like, that's, like, the total capacity, like... I, I forget. I, I, I always forget what, what, that, what the, the units on that means. Um... Ah, okay, so, now here's the question. I think we're gonna call format on a line of text in particular, and... That way we don't have to keep formatting everything and, and doing nonsense. Every time you add a new line, it gets formatted immediately. Um, which means when you add a line, the window also needs to call... Uh, you, need to, you need to give it the width here. Because it this doesn't know what its parent is doing. Okay, 3.6 amps for one hour. There you go. Is the laptop part of that hardware class you took in high school? What was the laptop part? I I remember uh, learning how to take apart laptops when I, way back in the day, I had like a little unpaid internship kind of job at this computer repair place in town. Um, and laptops were like one of the main things we took apart aside from just like cleaning gross looking des desktops. Oh, okay. Well, laptops are cool. I mean, they can be really annoying to take apart and repair, but once you get like a, a nice uh, a nice process down um, and make sure that you keep track of all the little screws and stuff and know exactly where to put them back, like it, you could it, you get really fast at taking apart and putting together laptops after a while. They're they're annoying at first until until you've taken apart a few and then you're like okay that's how it fits together and then it's not so bad.
Okay, so now what we need to do is... Um, Len of this is going to return either six or seven, probably seven. Uh, I would imagine it's seven. Yeah, okay, it's gonna return seven. So we're gonna, and then let's say the width of our window is five. That's not an H. Uh, <laughs> uh, so if the width is five, that means we can only have one, two, three, four, five, and we need to snip it and push these down here to be F, G. Um, so we need the substring from width, unless this is zero indexed, which is, it would be the substring from, this would be a four. This would be width minus one. We're gonna have to figure that one out. Um, two. Oh, and then we, we might need to subdivide because like if the width is five and we give it like a string that's length 13, we're gonna have to chop it down multiple times. But I mean, that would actually be fine, I think. Um, can we just do it recursively? Hmm. What's a good solution for this? So we need to take an arbitrary length string, and we need to start in the beginning and get the first width characters, and then take the rest of the string. Okay, so we take, we take this substring, and then we look at the rest. Take that substring, look at the rest, take the substring, until we run out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to need to have a loop of some kind. Um, so while... I mean, we could do it recursively, but I tend to lose track with recursion, so I think we're just going to do it this way. I... It sucks, we have a class in Haskell, and I could, I, oh, list comprehension. Could, can I do that in Python? I wonder if I could just do it that way. Haskell's hard, but it is pretty cool. And it's actually reminds me a lot of Python. There's like a lot of little things with Haskell's like syntax and stuff that's kind of similar to Python. And I feel like they were probably inspired by it. When they when they came up with their stuff, um, but yeah yeah list comprehension. Um, I bet we could do like a sweet ass list comprehension here and just like boom, get what we need because a string is a list, uh, I believe. Is a string a list? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> maybe a string isn't a list. Uh, oh god, um, I don't think this works the same way as in Haskell. There's, there's some crazy stuff you can do in Haskell, but I think it's also because Haskell's, like, lazy. Iterable expression. Yeah, okay. Here's what we do. Um, well, strings are lists in a lot of languages, I think. Like in in C. I think in C++, a string is just uh, an array of characters. So yeah, it's not a list, but it's like... I don't know if you can treat it like a list in list comprehension stuff. Well, what's going to happen is when you add a line, it's going to be the one singular line, big line of text, right? So this is going to get called, for example, um, 
right here. When we add a line to the combat log, we also do, um, you know, wrapped text dot add line, right? And so we're giving it that one big line of text, and we only format it here. We don't have to format a bunch of times, we just format it once. So this is when it's going to format. Um, and so that way it's just going to do this little thing once, when you add it, and then it's done. And if we're appending, it, we don't have to worry about, like, fitting it or whatever, right? Like, even if we format it and it adds, like, 1,500 new lines, um... It's going to be, uh... What's the word? Um, it's gonna be... Fucking, you know, it, it, it's gonna be at the bottom. So it's gonna be appended onto the end and it, it'll, it'll be good. Uh... So what we do here is we return a list, right? Because we're gonna do list comprehension. And... We could return a list that is... Comprised of every five characters or every width characters in the line. And then we don't have to write out like complex shit. Like you just, you just do a list comprehension and you're done. Um, it's like, we don't even need this. Uh, well, we kind of do. Cause if the length, if the line is not greater than width, then don't even bother. Um, and just return uh, line. Can't, wait, that doesn't work. Uh, I'm thinking of Haskell syntax now. Um, hey, math, why can't you solve your own problems? <laughs> Shit, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, I guess I could just do an else. And then make an array, like, uh, so... How, like, can you... I, th I thought you could just, like... Well, I mean, the list comprehension should pick it up either way, probably, if I do it right. Um, so, hold on. Let's see, we might not even need to do this if statement. So, if we do... Uh, what do you hate the most about math? <laughs> nice. Oh, what do you mean? God, I, like, I kind of want to solve this on my own instead of just looking at, like, you know, a solution for it. Because I feel like I can do this in a, in a neat little way, but I just gotta, I gotta figure this out. I can, I can do it. I can do it. I swear. Um, okay, I need to look at the string functions. Something to the quartic power. There is a cool method we could we could have used, maybe called split that just splits a string across like a character, and returns a list of like all the chunks, but it's on specific characters. It's not like split the. Oh, split it line breaks. No, I needed to split 
every X characters, but that's not like a built-in thing, I think. Maybe it's partition. No. No, that's a tuple where the string is in three parts. That's not what I need. Um, yeah, I was just trying to see if there was like something built in that just does what I'm trying to do. Um, where is like substring? Well, yeah, but I mean, those are those are valuable things to have, right? They all have a different purpose. Ah, okay, that is that is very similar to uh, to Haskell. Okay, cool. I didn't know you could just do that. Um, but X colon Y. The problem is. Hmm. Like, yeah, it probably is. I, I was just thinking, like, oh, it could be fancy, a dude thing. Um, yeah, we'll just do a while loop. I wanted to be cool. Um, I, I wish there was a function like in C++ where you can just get like substring where it's like, oh, start here, go to here. That's you get that little chunk of the string. I guess. Wait, no, we could use a, a version of list comprehension for that, right? Like. um, Because you can refer to characters in a string as if it was an array. And we could just do like from here to here with comprehension, right? Um. Since we don't have the substring function, that would do the same thing. Uh, Python list comprehension. Um, oh yeah, x two. Okay, I see what you mean. Um, right. And then when you say stir there, that's just like the name of the variable, like line, and then brackets. Yeah. Okay, I see what you mean. Um, so while line, so we're gonna make. Result. Yeah. All right. I get it now. My my Haskell brain was like, but that's X colon Y, and Y is the rest of the string, and X is the first character, and it's like, no, that's not that's not how Python does it. Uh. So while actually we can just do while len of line is greater than width. Uh. Because. We need to keep checking that and keep slicing it. Result dot append. Um, the first width characters. Well, I just put zero. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay. Um, how do you, how do you, how do you boot it out of the original? Wait, can we not have this be like an expression and just for the, the, the whole thing of line? Like, that's what I was trying to think about with the, there's, it, it, it looks so close. Like with just a little bit more in the list comprehension, we could just have it do this repeatedly. There's gotta be a way. Like, like if you, um, uh, filter, filtering elements in list comprehension. Oh, come on. Come on. They're, they're, oh yeah, they're immutable. Shit, you're right. I totally forgot about that. Um, th there's, there's gotta be a fucking way to do this. I'm so, like, upset that I I feel like I'm, like, on the verge of just, like, my brain just clicking and going, like, yeah, that's how you do it. And it's making me angry.
There is a way, because you can list comprehend through multiples of line length. X minus width to X. Okay, so you're saying do like a for loop and just slice it up like that? Oh, and you could do that in the in the generator. So X to X plus width, or you know, either way, really. Um Something like that? A teacher, a person who helps you solve problems you wouldn't have without them. <laughs> no, I think you'd, you'd have a lot of problems even without your teacher. Uh, like, you see what I'm going for here? It's, it's very gross in Python. Like, you can write this so much simpler in, in Haskell, I believe, but... I basically, like, I want it to be generating, you know every five or every width X's, and then it just, you know, you know, you know, um, you see what I'm going for? And I guess your way is actually better, like X minus width to X. Um. Right. A max around the the this part, maybe. No, um, max x or len line. But how do I um? How do I do this correctly so x is actually defined? When will you have to make a yearbook when you're out of school? Why are you on the yearbook creation committee? <laughs> I never had to make any yearbooks when I was in school. <laughs> this would look so much better in Haskell. This is just a mess. I don't I don't like this anymore. <laughs> I just don't want to do it in Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, I gotta move it around so the X is actually defined. Um, bracket's not closed. What? Okay, well, whatever. Um, what the hell? What do you mean it's not closed? It's closed right there. Uh, it's to slice up. It's to get every five characters as an element in a list. Um, here, let's uh, let's like just run this in the fucking Python terminal. Um, God damn it! This is in a Python terminal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you a Python terminal? Yeah. Oops, uh, we need a line. Oh, really? Oh! Wait, so how do I... Oh, do, can I, Wait, I'm just building the entire list. I can just do result equals this. But that's still not closed. 
this no it's just white um because this is like the entire oh this is loading um but this still says my my bracket is not closed my slice oh you mean like this part Wait, what? Because I'm looking at... It's just... It's just sitting there! <laughs> well... How does that... What? Oh, man. This... Syntax is very strange for my brain. Oh. Uh, I think I see what you mean, but how do you use that inside of, like... So... Well, that doesn't do anything. Uh... Ah. Okay. I, I see what I was doing wrong. Thank you. Um, all right, let's see what kind of monstrosity this poops out at us. <laughs> Not correct. Uh, good to know. So, uh, what do I need to change? Min. Just about there. I don't know where the empty string is coming from. X mod width equals zero. Well, I guess X starts at zero, right? So zero mod width is zero, right? Zero divided by a number has zero left over. Yeah, I, I guess. So I guess that's why it gets the... We can just trim the empty string. It, you can just skip that. It doesn't matter. So yeah, I mean, that's what we want, right? A-S-J-D-H. A-J-K-S... Okay, well, let's fucking make it readable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. And yeah, we'll just we'll just ignore the empty string. I don't really care if it's there. Um, beautiful. I'm glad I figured that out. That uh, that was that's good. Thank you for helping. Uh, very kind of you. I, I feel like you could write this so much better in in, in Haskell. <laughs> this looks kind of gross, uh, but at least it does what we want. That's all I care about. Okay, so now we have result, um, and result is going to be a list, which is what I wanted, and then we return result, um, and so, right, new line, new lines equals this, if new lines are not equal to this. There you go, yeah, it's a one-liner. That's that's what I wanted. Uh, yeah, it's pretty clunky. I, there may be a cleaner way to do this, but, you know. <sighs> Whatever. And we don't need the while loop anymore. 
There you go. That's what I wanted. I wanted to just simplify it down so it's like if width is greater than zero, do this. And this should poop out. Well, let's actually test it. Fuck. <laughs> uh. Oh. That might do it. Mm. Okay, so... Damn it. Um... So what's happening at a length of two? For X in range from zero to two, right? Um, so the maximum between X minus width and zero should stop it at zero, right? So we don't go into the negatives. Um, sliced to minimum of either X or the total length, which should be two. Um, for x equals zero, it's empty. Yeah, but why is it... I guess when x is... When... when It never gets to the width. So, it, yeah, it never does anything until five, but it never gets to five because five is outside of the scope of the range. Um, right. How do we fix that? There's There's a generic solution in here somewhere. I feel like the stuff I'm doing in my finite automata, automata, what the auto tomato, uh, fucking whatever class. I feel like the stuff we're learning in there would actually apply here. Um, let me open a lab or something and see if maybe I can find out some, some big brain plays. X to X plus width, maybe, maybe. Um. Let's try that. Oops. Hi. Yeah, okay. I was, I, all right. So my idea was, uh, <laughs> hi. <laughs> okay. Well, that's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to know my initial idea was actually not completely incorrect. All right. So there we go. That should work. It works in more than width. It works in less than width. Um, it works in single character. It works for the empty string and just gives us nothing, which is actually good. That's kind of what I wanted. Um, there we go. Now what happens if it is exactly equal to width? Uh, okay. Alright, yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to do. Cool. I'm sure there's some bugs hiding in there somewhere, but for now, it's good to know. And then we can test it against the empty set, right? Um... Yeah, perfect. Uh... So if it's not the empty set then uh, iterate and shove it all into, you know, add lines. Um, we just do four L in new lines. Append L. There you go. In fact, the Newgrounds tells you it's just the password. Uh, tells you if it's just the password that's wrong is amazing. 
Um, I think most, there, a lot of things do do that, don't they? Maybe not, I don't know. <sighs> okay, so now... We need to test this. Oh, shit. <laughs> it hit enter too soon because of the, like, new lines and crap. Uh... Let us make. Let us. Um... Let's make a test.py file so we can just, like, paste stuff into here we want to mess with. Um... just copy over everything it would have because then we can just like run this on its own um Okay, so this should work. F5. Look! It did the thing! <laughs> Holy shit, dude. It's so exciting when shit actually works. Take out the conditional and the comprehension to make it faster by doing range 0 to C. Oh, shit. Massive IQ moment. Uh... Yeah, because you can do... Yeah, that's right! You can, you can, you can make a range that, like, trims out the specific stuff. I, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so range zero, something, uh, wait, what the fuck? The ceiling of the length over width times width. What? If, what? Hold on, what is range's parameters? Because I'm getting I'm getting thrown off. Range Python. I need to double check on what the arguments actually mean. Um Start, stop, step. Okay. So yeah. Width step. Um stop. I mean we kinda uh Yeah, I think, wait. So, seven divided by five times width. That's gonna give us empty characters at the end, is it? Well, no, cause it's gonna, yeah, never mind. No, it won't. I'm dumb. This isn't a function. Do I need to import math? I think I do. No. Where does seal come from? Okay, gotcha. Um, I thought it... I figured it would come from math. Um... Oh, right. Right. So it... it duh. Or I could just do this. No, I can't. I lied. <laughs> I lied! <laughs> There's a way you can just import it, like... Okay, whatever. Math is mm. There you go. 
Test it. Oh, from math. Gotcha. Hey. Thank you. See, two brains are better than one. Uh... All right, cool. So now we have our fancy little, f fancy little doodad uh, that does this, does the judge. Um, gotta have a width, or it doesn't know what to do. But no more than fifty. Fifty what? <laughs> uh. All right. So now it'll do this. Oh, right. Gotcha. Well, I guess now we need to test it and put 51 brains in a jar and wire them all together and see what happens. It's, it's probably more like six, honestly. Dude, four people doing a group project for a class is already a nightmare, so yeah, I don't know. Okay, we're not using TCOD. We're not using any of this. Why is this imported? What the fuck is this? Could I have been using this the entire time? The world may never know. Um. <laughs> I didn't even see that. <laughs> what is text wrap? Where does that come from? Oh no. Did we just solve a problem that we didn't need to solve? Well, I mean, probably, because I could have just Googled, like, wrapping text in Python and... But, you know, fuck it. Mine is better. Get out of here. Wait, where am I using T-Wrap? Because it's it says it's in use. Oh. That's right, I'm such a moron. I already did this. The fucking... God, I'm an idiot. Um. So, when we... See, this is what happens when you forget your code base. Um... The, this is wrapped text that you're looking at right here. And it wraps it by word, so it doesn't just cut characters off. We already had it. Oh my god, I'm gonna shit my pants. We did have fun solving it, though. Uh, I'm using Python because Python is not used for video games, like, at all. And I wanted to push Python a little bit and see, like... You know, what can we do with Python performance-wise and everything? Can it work for a video game? So, uh, it's also a nice, easy language that's, like, chill, and I don't have to think very hard compared to, like, stuff like C++ and everything that's a lot more in-depth and, and involved. Uh, groups of cavemen got up to groups of about 50. Oh, nice, nice. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so it's it's just an arbitrary decision. Uh, I, I wanted to, to, to see what I could do with Python. Um, all right, so disregard everything we did. Uh, and just call this one line. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do this in the render function. It doesn't seem to be very slow, though. I mean, the game's not even running while it's doing the menu, so it doesn't matter. Um, so we'll just copy this for... Um, outside of a hoverable, we'll just apply this to rendering something else. Um, where would I put it, though?
Rendering with Pygame. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could have did Pygame. I did TCOD because it includes some stuff for roguelike stuff. Like, people were like, oh, yeah, this is, like, meant for roguelikes kind of thing. And, like, it has this module, which is really nice. Um, I mean, I could just implement that myself, but it was nice to have. Um, Pygame sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was using a little bit of Pygame once, but I didn't really do much with it. I was just kind of tinkering with it and, like, displaying sprites and seeing how it worked. But, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. TCOT is nice for roguelikes. It, uh, it does, it does what you need. And it has some, like, pathfinding, like, A-star stuff built in that you can just, you don't have to implement yourself. Um, it makes a couple things pretty nice. It also does vision for you. Um, so, like... How, you know, our character can't see around corners and stuff. Like, the vision and everything is part of TCOD, so you don't have to do that yourself. It's really, really nice. Um, yeah, yeah, pathfinding can be fun. Uh, I just didn't want to deal with it, so I didn't. <laughs> and I was like, alright, it's already there, I'll just use it. I might have to make my own, though, because uh, I'm running into some weird little things I don't like about... TCOD's pathfinding. Uh, it doesn't work exactly how I want it to, so I might just end up doing my own. Um, I have I have a thing um, from one of my old classes uh, when I did algorithms and such. Uh, we did pathfinding, and our final project was like a little, almost like a little roguelike thing in C++. Um, and let me let me pull that up really quick because I think what I could do um what the hell is it school stuff there we go fall no spring yeah 115 uh I think it was the final project open that up in visual studio um So, uh, all right, so what this does um, is you have your at sign is like your target uh, where your, your P, I think, is going to move to, and then the E's are like enemies. Um, and what I implemented here was, uh, what does it do? Um, what I did for this project it was kind of a weird thing, but it, it ended up working pretty well. Um, so you have you have a graph, um, and it makes you laugh. And what happens is it kind of just generates like a bunch of numbers for every tile, and then just goes to the smallest number kind of deal. Um, it was a thing that somebody mentioned in like an article on like the this wiki or something for making roguelikes and stuff that I kind of followed along with um, a little bit. And so it generates like a cost matrix. I don't have it, dis I, I can't really display it because the, the numbers are a bit too big for like the grid and everything. But what it does is um, display cost. Oh, I could display cost. Um, it just, it generates like a bunch of cost values for the map. And then all of the characters can just use that cost matrix, I think. So it only has to generate it like once for every character, right? Because all they have to do is just, from where you are to where you're going, just pick the numbers, forehead, um, I think. So it, like, it actually ends up working pretty well, I think, where it, like, doesn't have to generate it over and over again. But yeah, if I just, like, let the, um, auto advance, there we go. They just end up all converging, because the player goes there, and then the enemies go there. Um, now they're all on like the same tile and see those little O's up there are teleports and like that enemy was somewhere and he like teleported to get closer So it like the cost of moving from here to here is like properly calculated by taking the uh, the portal into account um, Let me pause it so you'll see like this enemy Can go into this portal and come out there like all of the portals are just linked together I think they all count as like the same thing, but Maybe I could use some of the code from this. Because um, it, like, it can, even in these, like, little subsection maps with, like, portals all over the place, like, uh... I can't move my cursor over mountains. That was uh, a short-sighted thing I 
forgot to like I didn't deal with, but I think I still got good points on it anyways. Um Yeah, okay, that makes sense. But yeah, maybe I could use something like this. Um a similar idea. And that way enemies can move like diagonally and stuff and uh, I don't know if I make them unable to move on top of the player. I, I should have did that. I, I don't know if it'll, it'll let them clump because what I'm looking for is like the kind of pathfinding, you know, where if the player is, if there's enemies blocking them, they just kind of move to the sides and like clump around the player and everything, um, which the current pathfinding like built in to, uh, to TCOD doesn't do the clumpy stuff. It, it, it doesn't do that. So if I want that to happen, I need to like, do something different. Um, okay, I'm still just like coping. The fucking stupid thing, the text wrap, and I'm gonna shit my pants. Um, hmm. I think what we need is not wrapped content, but scroll content. Um, because wrapping is this. I'm gonna leave this in test. I don't know, I'll just leave it there. But we can get rid of this now. Uh, find the nearest empty space, yeah, yeah. And I think in the, the code from that project, from that class, they might be able to do that if I set it so they can't move on top of each other or the player. Clump your own damn self. Shit. Um, so what we can do is... Uh, so we want a scrollable thing because we want the text log to exist beyond just what shows in the box and we just want like the most recent stuff to like push it, you know, out and only show the, the certain number of lines. And then let the player like pause the game or something and like scroll through the the, the log, right? Um, I don't know how they're gonna control it, but basically what we need is kind of like what I was doing with a, how the game is displayed with a camera, where it just shows like a slice, like a subsection of the array that the dungeon is, um, kind of thing. Uh, so what I need to do is just show like from this from this like a, a slice of the uh of the array of lines that get wrapped oh excuse me so we can do this um so we're gonna have we don't really need add line i think i want to keep the init function just to have it um what we need instead is yeah self dot lines uh, is t wrap and that that I think that generates uh, an array because it looks like that's how it works in the other one. What we need is an updat. Um, wait, not not info. Uh, No, this is still ad line. Now, I don't know, can you append? No, we need to concatenate here. Um, the plus operator is concatenation of strings, but I need to concat uh, lists. Um... Oh, yeah, plus. Okay. So, lines plus equal to this list. Cool. Um, and that should tack those in at the end, um, which is what we're looking for, because the most recent stuff should go to the bottom. 
And then we want to kind of display it backwards so it pushes it off the top. That's usually how I see people do it. So I feel like people would that would that would be the most comfortable for a player. Like that would immediately just be like, yes, this is how roguelikes display the fucking combat look. KSP is on sale a lot. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, Kerbal Space Program. It's it's an old game. It's really old now. Uh, oh yeah, when is Kerbal Space Two coming out? KSP Two. Okay, initial release date, it just says 2022. So, all right, this year we we will probably get KSP2. I am kind of looking forward to that. I'm not super great at, like, physics and stuff, like, intuitively, you know, and, like, making stuff that's not just garbage. But when KSP2 comes out, I'd be down to get it and, like, stream some of that. That'd be fun. Um, and then you can laugh at me not understanding physics... <laughs> and there you go it'll be great uh but yeah so when you add a line it just tacks on the wrapped version so there you go that takes care of the formatting right um anything is possible with enough delta v yes it just like it explodes and flies off the planet god i really hope two has entertaining like physics glitches and stuff people can find like the first one did that was honestly, like, for me, the most fun part of fucking playing Kerbal Space and, like, seeing other people play it and stuff was just, like, when dumb bullshit happened. And it was just like, hee hee, well, they're good, good squiggle all over the place, they blow up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> the Kraken is just like, it has to be in there somehow. All right, um, man, I got like a, a pimple that showed up on my neck, back of my neck, and it's like sensitive and it's bothering me. Found a way to break heat shields. Nice, nice. Always fun. Yes, yeah, so we don't need this anymore because it we can just format it as soon as we add it. Um, and then all we need to do is we need to render it properly. Um, so we might actually need a scrollable window then. Um, so no, this can still be wrapped content because it is wrapping it. That's what we want. We want wrapped content, but we also want a scrollable window. So we're going to need to make a new window class, I believe, that inherits all this bullshit. And oh God, this is such a monster of a render. Uh, we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah. Scrollable window. So, what's happening here is I have to render the border of the window. So it, it loops through the window size, draws the border pieces before looping through lines of content and drawing out the text. So, I, I, I do two loops when I really don't have to, um, I think. If I just draw out the lines, like, in one set of loops, I, it would be much better, I think. Um, I'll, I'll fix that later. Um, so, I guess we could try to... F I guess we'll fix it now, since we're... You have to do it anyway. Uh, that's true. Um, I don't know. What would I do with that? Because all it's it's just calling a bunch of print functions. It's just a shit ton of prints. Um. I guess I could make like a a function that just calls this, but I'm still using the same. I don't know. Uh. Okay, let's think about it. 
Did I already? I did not. Um, so let's paste it first, because it does have to do pretty much the same thing. The only thing that has to be different is that... Stop it. It needs to account for some extra stuff. So, a scrollable window... I don't think we want to let it have, like, clickable stuff in it. I mean, we could. There's no reason we couldn't. We'll just leave it in there. Um, it's just going to need to get a little bit more complicated. Because it has to define, like, the visible region of the entire list of content that might be in, in the window. Um... I might need to overwrite all these functions anyways and just have another class that's like because I need to add different functionality to these without breaking the original function I don't I don't know if you can do that like I need to add a like a like a vertical position and I guess I could use the height of it for its its visible region oh shit you're right Yo, I'm pogging. Um, so we do. I don't think I can do it for render because I need to fundamentally change how this works. It can't just print everything. It has to be specifically in the region. So I think I do have to redo this function. Um, I, I'm not pogging anymore. Uh, but for init, we could do that. Um, so I think we copy this and then call like super init. Hmm. Well, the problem is base render. How does this work? I didn't make many comments inside of this. So what does render do? Um, self content, self choice lines. I guess choice is just default to zero. Yeah. Probably. What the fuck is self choice? Choice. Okay. I, whatever. Um, Should keep track of its lines in a different variable and set lines and then call render. Yeah, that would be better. Um, so let's take a look at how it works now and then see if we have to how much we have to do. So to render it renders the border. This part doesn't have to change. This is just the border of the window. Um, if I was smart, I wouldn't loop twice. Like when it's looping through and drawing the window, it could be drawing the lines, but maybe since I did it this way, it's actually maybe a little bit easier to to mess with because all we really need to change is how the lines work since they're not tied into this nonsense. Um, like this just draws a square around the whole thing and then it comes in to the center of the square and starts drawing the text. Like it, it jumps in an extra position from the from the top and the bottom because those are taken up by like the border lines, and then from the left and right it squeezes it in, um, I think, but maybe not. Uh, anyway, um, so what we could do is just modify what the window's lines is equal to, like lines. Okay. Yeah, here's what we can do. Um, I think I have an idea for this. Add comments. I should. Um, I think it'll take place in init 
and something. <laughs> Damn, dude, you got owned. I don't know, maybe. Uh... There you go. Otherwise, yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory after that. Like, it just loops, prints, loops, prints. Not, not much more I can comment on there. Um... Oh, you know what? This is actually important to do first, kind of, because it, it, it at least needs to fill it with blank spaces, because the window needs to be on top of whatever is underneath it, so it needs to overwrite that with blank spaces. So maybe it is fine that it's like a couple loops here. I, I think that's fine. Um, and then hell does. Oh, it needs to render the hoverable like stuff on top. Um, I don't know why it's in an ex try accept. I, I must have had some weird error where it was, like, outside of the range of something. I don't know. I, I think I had some strange little error here I could never fix that, like, was just annoying, and then this just fixed it. Because it, like, didn't... It wasn't really a problem, but it was, like, a problem with something, and I don't know. Um. Anyways, uh, so a scrollable window, when it renders its content, it should not be from... It shouldn't be from the beginning and to the end of lines. It should just enumerate over the visible lines. <laughs> yeah, it like it was a weird error that didn't cause any problems, but it made it like crash. So nothing needs to happen when it fails this. And it, it like it failing this isn't even like a thing. I don't I don't remember what the problem was, but I was just like, fuck it, I'm done with it. Just, just forget about it. Move on. Move on. Next question. Uh, but yeah, I I can't I can't remember what was happening, but I, I do vaguely remember having some strange error with trying to render the, the hoverable like stuff. Um, and I had to just catch the error and just throw it in the trash can and then it would actually work. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know. I don't remember what the problem was here. Whatever. We'll, we'll think about that in a minute. Um, but if we take this and restrict what lines of content are being shown. Um, so what is it like? Super? Super init? Super init bros? Uh, do I need to copy and paste all the parameters? I would imagine. Okay, and then copy and paste the parameters. Right. Like, because I need to pass in the whatever is, if it's not default, it needs to get pushed through. Oh, super is parentheses. Okay. But do I, do I need to do that or would it, does it just work? 
without the arguments and it just like knows what to do. Um... Oh, you know what? I kind of want it to render backwards, too, so, like, from, like, bottom up, which is not what the original function is set to do. Hmm. Maybe we won't do bottom up, then. <laughs> I don't know. If you don't need the args yourself, you can just take them into a list and spread that. I, I don't know. Whatever. Um, so we need a Y scroll, which is like where it is, because you could just do Y scroll plus height and you'll, you know, you'll get how much to, to render out. Um, and then it, its content is going to be the, the full thing, but it needs a subsection. It needs a slice of content. Um, as its lines here, which maybe we should have like content is is not the original, and like the unedited content is like um, full content, half life, full life consequences. So then we just make a backup of content that is the full stuff, and then content can always be set to like a slice of the full thing. Um, based on this and this. I think that'll work. And then we just need, like, an update function or something that, you know, sets the, uh, the Y scroll correctly and everything. Um. We also need, um. One of the other streamers you watch is playing Project Zomboid. Day five, learning the game. Hey, they're doing their best. They're learning. Okay, so what we're going to do here is um, stuff. We're going to do stuff and things. And other things and stuff will happen from these stuff and things. And then everybody will be happy. Uh... So the wrap content So the full content is going to be wrapped. It's going to be exactly the size it needs to be to display properly. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, you jump into the deep end. Like when you throw your kid in the swimming pool and just tell him to figure it out. Uh, you know, you, you sink or swim. <laughs> but uh okay. So let's let's take a let's take a little brain mode here. Um brain blast. So add so when we when we add a line um what happens is it wraps it then it appends And then, hmm. So this, right? Once once it wraps it and appends the text, now it it has it has it in there, right? And wrap content is the object here. This is an object. So the window, the content value. Okay, well, we can just set full content instead of content. Okay, that's that, that's not a problem. So, so now that is is then reflected in full content. Um. Is 
Wait, but we already have this, right? This is already the combat log. It's just not formatted, so I guess we don't already have it. Because hmm. I'm trying to not waste too much time, like, just doing weird, silly duplicate stuff, like... Uh, but, okay, so the combat log is the raw version. The window dot full content is the wrapped version of the combat log. So these are like different versions of each other. Um, once we have this, now this could be, this is going to become really massive eventually. So we do need to like trim this at a certain point. Um, because it's going to become a pain in the ass. Um, like, we're only appending a single line at a time, but, you know, it, once it becomes a huge array, so we'll, we'll start getting rid of the oldest entries after a certain number of lines. Um, but anyways, so once we have full content, then what we need to do is we need to take a slice of full content, right? Um... We need to take a slice from the Y scroll. Uh, actually, no. We got to do it backwards. Because the combat log is going to be oldest at the top, most recent at the very end. So we want the end of the array. Have I heard of the witness? I think so. Um, so if we want the end of the array, we're going to want to go... Um, len minus y scroll or okay well we want to be able to scroll up and down eventually it can use negative indices oh okay um So if I did a slice, like, negative, uh, height to len of full content, um, would that go backwards from the end? Haha, <laughs> circle line game. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, really? Why does it work like that? Height plus one. Negative zero doesn't exist. What are you talking about? What's not going to be at zero? We're going to be going... Well, okay, it might... We're going to have to do like a min or something here. But it's going to be like... We're going to have a bunch of lines of content... And we're only going to be looking at, like, let's say this, right? So we're going to be at, um, actually, no, it's, it's, it's not like that. Uh, we're going to be constantly, at least by default, looking at the end. So let's say the last four. And it's going to keep appending more and pushing this list further up. Um, don't need the plus one. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, right? So we need it to be at height, right? Because that's the bottom. And then this is height minus, or this is a uh, fucking height minus what? No, this isn't height. This is len. This is the length of the whole fucking list. 
Yeah, but height is the window height. That's not the height of the list. Uh, so this is Len of full content down here. And then this is Len minus height. So if we do negative height to Len, right? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about too. Like the window height is in terms of lines. We have to like subtract two or something for the border. But Len, it, like in terms of what lines of the list we're trying to draw, um. Oh, I okay. So negative one means the end of the list is what you're saying. Okay, I was misunderstanding what negative one was. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And so, if the list is only two lines, uh, that'll still work, right? And, or uh, if that if that'll cause an error, then I can always just do min between zero and negative height. Which would always be zero, so wait, no, I can't. Um, will, will that comprehend it okay? Or is the negative height going to cause a problem for a short list? Because that could give us some out of bounds. Uh, if, you know, because if height is four and the list is only two. Negative height would give us a negative 2 index, unless list comprehension can account for that. I'm assuming it can, but... Um, well... That's that's all I'm worried about is just, you know, the, the index running out and being like, Oh, sorry, you don't have enough lines, so I'm going to crash now. Um, which is when... I would probably have to do the, the calculation with Len. Because what I could do, right? I, I know if, if, uh, if Len is 2, right? And we do Len minus height. We can do uh, the min GW of 0 and... Th that's LNE, but you get what I mean. Minus height. So, len minus height will always give us, it's either going to give us um, a positive number, right? Which, in which case we want this, um, because that'll be a, a positive number that gets turned negative. We have the negative outside the min, uh, I, unless negative zero makes the program crash and then, okay, that doesn't work. But if negative outside with a zero works and it just it's zero, then that's fine. Um, because I want this negative to apply if it's this option right here. Um, and that should work, right? Because it'll either give us zero if it's if it's below zero, which we don't want below zero, we just want zero. Or it'll give us like this number if it's, you know, right here where there's a bunch of lines, len minus height would be a positive value and that's what we want. So I think this would be our, our fix to make sure it doesn't go out of bounds. I believe. Minus max height num lines will probably work, but you can do positive indices if that's less brain crunchy. Um, max of height or num lines. So, len versus height yeah okay yeah that makes sense yeah that's that's easier and i think that's more obvious if you're just looking at it um so yeah negative max either the length of the list or the height of the window um and that'll either give us two which minus two get us right there perfect or if it's crazy in like eight, um, but this is only four, it'll give us four. And that, okay, yeah, that's okay. That's it. This one. Um, 
Okay, so now let's look at it again and see how to implement it. So, so our full content is going to be... Okay, so content is an object here, right? If we set full content to content, that's not like a deep copy. That's just basically like if we modify content, that modifies full content, um, which is not what we want. So we need like an independent, different copy of this object. Or, oh, even better, we, we don't even need the object itself. We just need lines. Um, well, that's not true because they could have text color applied um, and stuff like that. The content could be a little bit more complicated. Hey, there's Spare Booker. Welcome. I uh, hope you're enjoying got a shot and gave you a band-aid and just removed it and there's zero blood on it hey yeah sometimes it it seals heals up pretty quick argument to the constructor um because sometimes like maybe i just want to make a window that has a set amount a set content right like i have windows whose content is like that's what it is um like maybe i mean if i don't i could just remove it but I thought I did. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't really need it in the constructor. I tend to just modify the lines later anyways. I don't know. I just threw it in there because at the time I was thinking about it. Um, yeah, I guess I don't really use it that way ever. Like anytime I do, it's just empty anyways. So it's like, what's the point? But, um, I just thought maybe I should have it there in the case that I want to do something with content objects and stuff and passing them in to creating a window, but, like, I could maybe refactor my code to be cleaner that way if I just make these objects separately and then put them in there. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We don't want to copy it. Right, we want the original. So what do we what do we do? Do we just leave these arguments out? Will it use these arguments in this function? I don't think so, right? It'll just use the default values. Because we didn't tell it what needs to be called. Um Unless Python can just automatically pass the arguments through. Um, is this is a window. Yeah, and yeah, we don't want a copy of the object either. I, I don't know. So, give the parent, so give the super initializer a new one I create. So you're saying to make a new, like, content object? I don't think you mean to do it like this. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I want to just update these lines, and then that's what gets rendered, right? Because it's rendering from the content not the full content so as long as i set this to um to the to the you know the what we did here uh, not here so as long as i set content dot lines to this the slice of full content then we're good so i i need to make the backup I need this to be a copy, not just like 
I need this to not get modified. And I believe this isn't going to work, right? Like, if you do, like, let's, uh, let's do it in the console. Let's, let's actually find out. So if A is one, two, three, and B is A, no, not B, B is A. Now, if A dot append, that modifies B. So we need, we need an independent copy of content dot lines in full content. So it doesn't get modified because we need this to be the original backup all the time. Um, we need to preserve that backup. Now that's what I, yeah, and we need it to be formatted so we can't just use the combat log itself unless we format the combat log, but what if we want to use it in other windows or something and like, you know, support different formatting? Well, then we want like an unformatted version of the text as well. Um, I mean, deep copy is a thing, right? Like, there's a there's a Python module to make a deep copy of a of an array or of a list, so it's not just like a reference that gets modified. I know that's a thing. I don't think I have it in this project, but I've used it in other projects. Um, okay, so deep copy. If you import copy and do copy.deep copy. Yeah, it's like a default Python thing. Um, there we go. We just need that function. And then we need full content to be just a new thing unrelated to this. So we need to call deep copy. So now, um, can you, can you just do like import copy? There we go. That's what we need. So. Oh, the song's a banger. Upper GX has a hacker man theme. Nice. Uh, all right, so there we go. So now that's taken care of. Now it is independent of this and we can freely modify our lines all we please to our to our heart's content. Um, Okay, so now that's taken care of. Um, I think we're going to need an update function, probably. Uh, so once it's copied, I mean, we could just modify it now. Um, I don't know what the self-choice thing is all about, but I guess I'll just keep using it. And this is where this comes into play. Makes your phone vibrate when you use the quick menu. Hell yeah. There we go. So that should do what we want it to do. And then from there, uh, now when it updates, we just need to call this again. Because this is gonna not 
you know, it's not going to automatically keep giving us the slice. So we need to we need to at least do this in the update. Um so we can get what we need out of it. Well, we're not going to add to content. We're only going to be adding to this and then content is going to be updated independently of full content. Um, so like, I mean, we might just, you know, call this when we add to this. Um, but my, my point is like, what I want to do, and I think this will work how I want it to. Um, so we have our combat log. And we have our visible lines, right? So this is just the slice right here to display. Now, what I want to happen when a new line comes in is I want to append it here, which will push this up. And then I want to take a new slice that's now here and disregard this one. And now we have a new slice. And so this is always just going to be like whatever the size of the window is. So if we want to make like a longer window, window, whatever, it'll work. And it'll always just be the bottom slice of the full thing. But I want the full thing there. Yeah. And then I want the full thing still there, though, because if you now drag your window up and down, you can see like the other stuff like, you know, scrolling through. Um, and you can kind of slide it up and down, you know, whatever you want. If you want to check the, the previous log stuff, um, I want that to be an option. So, I don't know. Um, I may not need the unformatted text, but if I want to have like a bigger log you can open up that's not formatted, I am going to need the unformatted text, so... I might just have to have the copies. Uh, I may... I mean, it's probably not going to be a big deal in memory. It's just a bunch of strings, right? How bad could it be? Uh, but we'll see. Um, well, that we have to program it to work with the scroll wheel, which I may do, but you know, we got to get there first. Um, ain't nothing in life for free. So, that's where this is going to come into play. So, if it's at zero, it's at the bottom of the list. Um, so, why scroll of zero is here? So this part needs to get offset by Y scroll. So. Oh shit, can I do that? I don't know if I can. No, I do mean metaphorically, like the window, what the window is displaying is like a view into this list. And, like, by manipulating these variables, we will technically be moving it along the list. Um, I don't think this take this is going to take into account, like, the Y scroll offset. I don't think I can do that with negative one. Because I don't, I don't, well, yeah, I don't always want it to be at the bottom. But I do if the Y scroll is at zero. Oh, one plus, okay, can you do that? Okay, cool. I was hoping you could, but I was worried you couldn't. Thank you. God, I really... If somebody is just, like, super proficient with Python and, like, knows the style guide from front to back, they're just gonna fucking, like, die when they see my code. <laughs> I am not... I, I don't know anything about the fucking Python uh, style guide. <laughs> I did. I never looked at it. 
I, I think like I remember I took a class where we did use some Python and he mentioned it and like we kind of use you like <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like Minecraft you just, you just Fucking flop some blocks on the floor and it works Um. Okay So that should work um and then Okay, so what happens at We need a way to not have Y scroll. Okay, well that's going to be when we change Y scroll. We just check to make sure that Y scroll minus height is or 0. And we take the the max. Dude, wow, that's a good website. I can't wait to go to self.height plus self.yscroll.com. Height plus one? Wait, for which part? I, I think I know what you mean. Um. Yeah, yeah, because we're we're scrunching the bottom up. We need to change the top as well, so it keeps that same distance between them. Yeah, and it's either going to be the length of the content, or it's going to be... Yeah, okay. Unless... We can still get out of bounds with this. Oh. Okay. Uh... Yeah, but this is still going to go out of bounds, right? Because, I mean, I guess not Not if we don't let it. Yeah, that that's fine, because we're not going to let it go out of bounds. We're going to we're gonna bound it by the function that lets us scroll up and down. It's going to stop Y scroll at whatever makes this zero or whatever. You know, you know what I mean? Um, we're, we're going to bound that later in a different function, so that should be fine. We can just leave it like that. And it shouldn't give us any errors because we're never going to let Y scroll go beyond, go even further beyond and go Super Saiyan. Um, exactly, exactly. So we're going to, we'll, we'll take care of that later in a different thing. For now, we'll just let it be the bottom because I want to make sure it scrolls backwards and does the thing we want it to do. Um, so now, yeah, see, this is where Git would come in handy. So if like all these changes fuck up, we can like look at what they were. <laughs> Uh Whoa 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 Woke up at like six or seven today. That was a long day, dude. It's already ten. Jeez, been up for a while. I might wrap things up here. Cause it's like I mean the more tired I get, the less progress I'm gonna make anyways. Um so what we what we want to do is we want to push to the combat log, and then we want to push to the scrollable window. We also need to make it a scrollable window. So let's first make sure that works. Um, this one is scrollable. Where did we go so wrong? Ah. Get it. Um. Yum, 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 yum. So we got a list index out of range. Uh, self dot choice is the only list index besides foreground and I. Did I not append to my foregrounds and stuff? That shouldn't really matter. Unless it does matter. I need to know which one of these list indexes is out of range. Because <laughs> this does kind of matter. I'm pretty sure it's actually this one. Um. Yeah, because self.choice is just... It's what it is. It's not changing. 
So the only one that is changing and incrementing is this eye, which is now shooting out of range. So it's out of range because these are coming from our, our content, our rap content. Uh, we are appending, but we never like set it up in the first place. Oh, we never did this. Right, each line needs... We never called our, our parent initializer, I think. Um, right? Or do we have to call that explicitly? Please call update and init instead of duplicating the line. Oh, yeah. I'm, you see? That's where the sleepiness gets you. You, you miss little things like that, and you're just like... Nye. Um... I, I do that all the time and have to go back and like be like, oh, fucking. Uh, all right, so. Right, so what we need to do, I think, is just call this. Because um, I, I don't think it, I don't think it correctly calls its parent initializer. Per rep line. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, I do I do I call this function at all? I yeah I did, and it was when I yeah you're right. Okay. Um. So to fix that. Um, Let's, because I, I want to get the length of what's returned by this. Um, and then just kind of, you know, append for eight, each line. Uh, let's just make it like a little variable. Um, there we go. So that should work. It's going to make, like, you know, one to infinity new lines. It's going to append them to lines. And then for every new line that gets added from zero to length of new line, yeah, uh, it will append um, a thing. You can tell me what the music is. I will crinse. Lovely Planet from Lovely Swamp. The previous song was Bit Trip Runner. Yeah. Triumph. Uh, this song is totally different. What's that face for? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> uh... Oh, okay, gotcha. You remembered the game. Yo, you did it. Alright, so... Give it an F5. What happened? What? Excuse me? There we go. Okay. Oh, it was... Right. It had accepted, so it was hanging. Um... <laughs> yeah, this is probably gonna happen a bunch. Um... Really? Is self.choice out of range? Is it like... Did I screw up content? Content... Why, wait, why does content have... Content's an object. So self.choice... Um, I think I only use that on the main menu, maybe? I don't remember. Let me let's let's take a walk through memory lane. Um we have a value here set for clickables. And, but 
does that do? I don't actually know what self dot choice does. <laughs> um, I thought if content, huh? What the fuck? <laughs> what do I do that for? What? Why am I doing that? What did years ago me think here? What what was he doing? Why do I do this? This what? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh Oh. Wait, is it because I can have multiple content? I okay, using the same fucking variable name is bad. Bad shame. Shame on me. Uh cuz that definitely just obfuscates everything. Um that's very confusing. Um, it's it's an array of content objects. Yeah, yeah, horrible naming. I, I, I totally fumbled that one. Um, yeah, the, the UI shit, this is all really, like, bad. Um, that's kind of why I stopped working on this, is because, like, I know the UI in particular is Garbo, and I needed to, like, rework it, but I was like, that's a lot of work, and I'm dumb, so I just didn't do it. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay, let's 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 make this a little bit better right now. Um, so what we have here is a list of content objects. So what content is? It's the text that gets displayed inside of the border. So if we want to name this better, uh, which we do, I checked if self.content was a real website. It hasn't loaded. It is a real website? I I don't know. Uh, but somebody should have named it something else. <laughs> so what we should name this instead is... Um... What what do I name it? What would be a better name here? Uh, because it's a list of content that you can choose between. So I think, if I'm thinking about this correctly, I believe the pause menu uses this to choose which pause menu thing you're on. But I I can't say that for sure. Um. Content equals melee skills. Content.append all your melee skills. Layer hoverable append. Content append UI content. Content append. Yeah, see? In the same layer, the same window, I have multiple content. And what it is, is it's like, it's my skills, it's my items, or it's my stats. And the value here on clickable is what sets is what gets set in choice. If we go look at well, let's press F5 so that error goes away. If we go look at uh, clickable, it returns true or false and self.clicked. Yeah, see window choice is equal to the value. So choice is if you have tabs in a window. That's that I guess that's what I, I was thinking. It's really hard to, to puzzle through what I was thinking at the time, but yeah, so if we if we look at our pause menu, this is self this is window.choice zero. This is window.choice one, window.choice two. Um and which one you choose, they're all in the same layer, right? They're the same window, the same layer and everything. It's just different, you know, main things here. I don't know if that was a good way of doing it, but that's what I did, I guess. Um, yeah, and there we go. The hoverable is fixed. I, I got rid of that minus one, and that, that made it so the last character is hoverable as well. Um, okay. 
Okay, so now we know what that's for. Um, so now... So this should not just be called content. This should be called... What would be a good name for a list of objects that are called content? Um... Your cat's your cat lamp's slap function is sensitive. You drop a single Lego stud on the table, it's on, it goes off. <laughs> That's funny. Right, once we get the uh, this thing working, I think I'm gonna wrap it up for the night because I'm getting really tired and I want to eat. Um, so yeah, it's not bad. So we got, this is the, this is what a lot of people don't like. Uh, this is what uh, people I was talking to online about Python and stuff were saying they don't like is when you have to refactor a variable to something else that unlike in other typed languages, you can fuck it up a lot easier. <laughs> so we gotta, we gotta be careful and make sure that we catch all of the points where it's, where it's named this. Um... Yeah. So now we got to go to main. <coughs> oh, this is going to be so bad, dude. There's so many to replace. Oh, I hate programming. <laughs> and you can't even find and replace either because, look, it's like we got fucking content out the wazoo. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's just fucking get our hands dirty. Let's jump in. Uh, so we're looking for layers.content. Um, those all need to be content layers now. This is fine. This is fine. Uh... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Layers... I wish I could put, like, a generic, like, number so it just ma- like, regex would be nice. I can- you can regex in this, can't you? You can! Um... Reg... X digit slash D. Oops. Oh no, I need to like uh Yeah, Reg X is Reg X is dope. Uh Reg X characters. Cheat sheet, Reg X syntax. Um Matches a single character except line terminators is dot. I want to match like a chunk of characters. Um, so, oh wait, no, is that just, no. Yeah, that's not, see, it's not matching anything. Um, that's, that's not going to do it, is it? <laughs> that's, yeah, no, that's fucked up. Uh, that's not how you do it. Um, Use dot colon or dot star assertions groups and ranges. Oh, if we just put brackets. Okay, so yeah, there we go. You put brackets around stuff you want to like. See, that matches layers, but it also matches A. We need to match the whole group. Um. Is that what you were saying star for? Does star, like... Quantifier. Matches the preceding item. Okay. Unless it's greedy. Yeah. So, star matches the preceding item X zero or more times. For example, slash B O star matches boo in a ghost booed and B in a bird warbled, but nothing in a goat grunted. So I do need to group it. I want to match the group of characters. The 
but I can't seem to match like how do you match a string? How do you how do you regex a string? Uh You just type it. Well, that's what I thought, but it wasn't like like if I set it to regex and just type oh. What the fuck? I'm going to shit my pants. Uh Okay, dot bracket no. Um, how do we how do we match a special character like bracket? Because bracket is syntax. We need to escape it. I think with forward slash. No forward slash dot bracket. No forward slash. Uh, any character single white space. How do you do a bracket? It's hard because bracket is a thing. Okay. So, this one? Bracket? Yeah, okay. It's that slash, not the other one. Um, and then slash D? Slash D. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. We're learning. All right, so there you go. Layers with any numbers in between with, I think we need to escape the period. There we go. Um, content. Poggist champion. Uh. Okay, I think we done diddly did them all. Yep, there we go. Perfect. There you go. Reg X is very nice. Very cool and epic. Um, Control S and F5. Oh, God damn it. It's still the same thing. Right, because we never... Wait, I thought I addressed the foreground and background. I guess I didn't do it right. Um, We can... We can throw the exception here, right, with, um... Trace back? And see exactly? Will, will that tell us what index and what array and everything? Um... Wait, what was it? Where did I delete the other one? I oh no, it's right here. Except exception, trace back, print exec. Okay. Yeah. So let's um. Why isn't it crashing this time? I mean, it's not working, but it's also not crashing. What the hell? Oh, oh no, it is. Okay, it's just not crashing because it's it's throwing the exception. Um, it's just giving me the same thing. Um, Python moment. So, catching the error actually prevents it from hanging. Okay, that makes sense. Um, how do I? Do I just set, like, a breakpoint? But there's a lot of things that could end up here. Do I set a breakpoint right here when it when it catches the exception? Um, how do I... How do you set a breakpoint here? Oh. What's the... What's the command for that? There's, like, a button to press, right? Um... Where is the breakpoint button in this program? Because I thought you could just click here, but that's not doing anything. Oh. Oh, it's over here. Okay. Yeah, I can't... I, th I think F5... No, F5 builds it now. F5 used to just set breakpoints. Um... 
I ran the wrong thing. Okay, so we have now pooped out uh, some some shit. What do we got? Um, so we have caught an exception here. What do we need to inspect? Scrollable window? Content layers? Content object? Nothing. Okay, so these are empty. Because it's not... Right. We I think we do need to initialize it as well. But... Um... Uh, oh, because I set... Because I'm appending empty, I... D I know what I'm doing wrong. When I add the line, I put just empty brackets there instead of just leaving it blank. Where is it? It's in here somewhere. Wait, where is it? Uh... I don't know where it went. Not much working. How do I fix this? So, when it... When it calls this, this shit, test missed the bat. What is, where is this coming from? So, when the character hits an enemy, it's calling combat log push line. It's not really adding it to the window. That's what I'm confused about. Unless when I call update UI, it's... Oh, yeah. That's what's happening. Update UI is adding the the combat log right here. Um, yeah, so right. We, we need to... This this is wrong. We need to, we need to change this. Um, do not... Do not redeem. Uh, so get rid of this. I'm just going to comment it out for now. What we need to do instead is we need to push it. Push, push, push. Uh, stop. We need to call the proper functions here. That's why it's not wrapping, too. Um, I think we just got to straight up refer to it with the uh, the whole thing. We got to do this. And then call its member function. Right? That should be a member function. It's not, like, highlighting it. Um, it was Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is the day that I stream. That is one of the days. Uh, why is it not catching add line? Did I screw up something here? Oh. It's at zero. No, it's zero. Yeah, zero one. This is the next window on the zeroth layer. And then its content layer at zero should be... Yeah, scrollable window. Content. <laughs> That's pretty good, yeah. Um... Pumpk. If I just leave these blank, it just defaults to blank arrays, and then it, yeah, it just fills it based on how many lines are there. 
Um, so that part doesn't matter. It's the add line I really need to get working. But I don't know why it doesn't let me call that. Oh, because it's not... There we go. Do you recognize add line yet? No? I guess it doesn't know. What the heck? Uh, it's not catching this either. Hmm. A hundred emotes, wow. Wow. I guess it's fine. I mean, as long as it works. Who cares? Uh... Oh, I didn't remove the breakpoint, did I? I don't want that, actually. I want to... If... if there we go. Fuck. Eh? Oh! I put... Right. It needs wit. Um, so when we call wrap content, it's not really a good way I can think of to like call these functions correctly and everything. Because it needs, it needs the width. Um, so maybe instead of calling this... Uh, I call the window, and I tell it to add a line, and it does the line adding itself. So we call that function instead. Nothing happens. Uh, why does nothing happen? Yeah, nothing's hearing. Console, log into the console. See if uh, see what exactly is going on here. So let's just have it um, print to the console self dot. I guess self, uh, just the whole content layer for the window, just to see like you know what's going on in there. Um, we can also have it uh, print self dot full content. Oh, you know what? Wait, add line. 
I'm doing this wrong. I need to update full content, not fucking this thing. Yeah, adding a line is is self dot full content. That might be not why it's not working. Um, I'll leave this here for now, but I I think I actually solved the issue. We need to uh, append the full content, but full content is yeah, it's just an array of lines. It's not like an object with the add line feature. Uh, so maybe we want it to just be an object. Maybe we want it to be the content objects, because then we can add a formatted line to it, right? Um, put it in the chat. In the chat. What do you need me to put it in the chat for? You can put it in the chat. Oh wait, you're not. <laughs> you're not a. Uh, you're not subscribed. Well. <laughs> That's, uh, it's kind of a problem, isn't it? I guess you can't use the emo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you go. There's a jackpot. Um. <laughs> nice. Uh, so what we want to do, um, if I can pull my fo my ADHD back into fucking focus, uh, yeah, I don't think it's ADHD. It's probably it's probably just ADD. Like I I feel like I've had attention problems, but I don't know if it's like hyperactivity. I, maybe it is. I don't know. Like I've never really talked to a doctor about it. It, it does look pretty stupid. Um. God, I've already forgotten. What are we? Uh, we're we're doing this. Uh, yeah, if we if we make it a copy of the object instead of just the array, um, then we can add lines to it, right? And it will be this is such a stupid like back and forth. God. backs and the fourths. That is true. So... Okay, what if... What if, what do we do? Yeah, my phone gets laggy when it pulls up the keyboard too. Like, especially in, a, in like a little game or something. But also just in like the Google Maps or shit like that, it'll just start lagging really bad when it, the keyboard comes up. Android is just not well optimized is the main issue. Um... So we're trying to add a formatted line to the window. We have content lines. And we have full content. So we need to we need to add line to full content. That'll format it. And full content will now hold the formatted bullshit. And then when we update. Instead of just calling full content here, we have to do full content dot lines. I think. Yeah, dot lines, dot line. Okay. Give it a shot. Ooh, now it's infinitely spamming 
list index out of range, my favorite. Okay, so the FG and BG is still fucked. Um, UI layers add line. Full content add line. Self.width line. This can be empty, right? So, wait, no, we're not even, never mind, we're not even using that. Um, what is this return when it's like empty or something? Maybe, maybe that's causing problems here. Wait, yeah, well, I'm probably doing something horribly wrong because this is so fucking spaghetti. Uh, give me, hit me up with your, with the, with the knowledge. Uh. What? Okay, hold on. Let's let's think about this. So we have um I don't know exactly what's calling this and being out of range actually. So seeing the stack or whatever might help. Okay, now it's Oh, there it goes. Uh, oh, right, we have to... Oops. UI. It's at line 203. Or, well, 205. It's, it's getting an exception here. Yeah, so let's run in... Oh, no. Wrong file. Um, okay. So what's happening? How do we look at, like, what has called stuff? Call stack. Render, render, module. Um, so inside of window render, well, what called this? Main UI dot render. Well, that doesn't fucking help. Is it just the very first layer fucked up? Maybe? Because it, it calls main UI dot render, which starts for layer in, in layers, so it starts at zero. For win in layer, it start, so it's zero, zero. It starts rendering. And I think this is the very first render call, right? Well, it must not be if it's if the line is test hit the bat. But maybe line is like that's oh that's a local variable so that never mind. Um, well no, because that that tells us if line here is equal to test hit the bat, that means we're on window one. So we are on the um, we are trying to render the text inside of. We are trying to render the text inside of this. Oh! Maybe that's why it's fucked. Because uh, I... Well, hold on. Let me double check on this value, but... Oh no, that's layer. Wait, no, self win layer. Yeah. Okay, never mind. That's no, that should be zero. They're on the same layer, so never mind. False alarm. Um, so it is trying to render this. It's trying to render the the the, the first line, which is test hit the bat. I is one. So it's it's actually not the first line. It's the second line, but you know, when I is one, um, it's. It's foreground stuff is screwed up. See, there is no... The empty string! That's what's breaking it. Um, how do I get that out of there? Why is it putting the empty string in there? That's that's the only reason it's broken. It's because it has one too many... Uh, one too many elements in the lines array. 
Uh, we need to not append if it's an empty string. Where is that? So... Yeah, so there we go. That's what's going on. Darn empty string sneaking up on us. Uh, so right here... If new lines is not equal to empty... Well, no, because new lines... What is this return? Oh, it's not equal to a list of an empty string. That should match, right? Let's test it. There we go. So we don't want to append the empty string. We, that We hate that guy. Get him out of here. Oh, what's happening? Stop it. Okay, uh, get rid of the breakpoint. List index out of range! Man. Why is it still doing that? Okay, put the breakpoint back in. Look, empty. And empty. Excuse me? Told you not to. Um I just, I need to know what it's doing, really. I don't understand this function that well. Let's make it human readable so it's not just hard to puzzle out. empty string coming from I'm not calling my format function am I I don't think so yeah no I don't call this anywhere so I mean I just delete this too um So new lines doesn't return an empty string. It returns an empty array. So maybe we do that. I still don't know. Wait, is it coming from this? Am I stupid? I think I'm stupid. Why would I? What the fuck is wrong with me? I have default constructor things, right? Like, what am I doing? I have a default empty list constructor. What am I doing? Very, very stupid.
Okay, well, we still fucked, but... Oh, no, we hit the break point. Keep going. Listenix out of range! Yeah! Not again. Okay, so if that didn't fix it... Oh, we gotta take a look at it again. Okay, we still get nothing in the background and foreground. So, why? Excuse me? Why is this happening to me? I in range Len of New Lines. Len of New Lines would be... Well, I don't know what it would be with Testimus, the... Well, th that's the line. So, we, I mean, we have at least one line. Um, FG and BG should just be this. Look at the update function in scrollable window. Oh, right, duh. Content never gets touched. You're you're so right. You're so right. You know when you're right, you're right. Um, how do we fix this? Uh, I didn't really design this with this kind of use in mind, I guess, but. We could probably fix it by adding an update function. I'm just calling that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I could just add the... Yeah, you know what? I'll just do that. I mean, that would probably be easier. Just two more lines like this, but with FG and BG. Because I believe they're getting set okay in full content. Yes, they are. So, if we just copy them from full content the same way. Now, I don't know how slow this is going to be. But the naive implementation here is just like, hey, just copy them over. Although at this point, it may be better to do like a, a, a while loop or something instead of list comprehension. But... I don't know if it matters. They might be about the same performance, really. Um, thank you. Uh, dude. Hey, stop. Stop it. There we go. It didn't crash! <laughs> okay, it, it doesn't update properly, but we're on the right track. We're, we're closer. I don't know why it's, like, lagging behind, but we'll get there. Um, it's probably something to do with... I need to, like, refresh it per frame. Um... It's also not showing the enemy stuff, and that doesn't work either. Okay. I don't know why that doesn't work. It should. We, we did the thing with the numbers. I also know why the enemy's not working. It doesn't call this when the enemy does stuff. Um, I do that here. And then what we gotta do is very small brain, just minuscule, tiniest brain, smooth. Everything's going wrong. Uh, so what we gotta do now is 
we need to get rid of this. Um, oops. We need to update. We need to call this. Oh, you know what? It may be like, it may not be lagging. It may just be the wrong values or something. Like, like maybe it's, maybe minus one is one before the end of the list. So maybe it's just, just Y scroll, right? Maybe it's stopping prematurely. Yeah, that didn't work. And now nothing is there, so okay, that uh, wrong. Um I mean Y scroll is zero, so it's not like it's zero, it's just Default to zero in the initializer. Where's those? Okay, put that one back. Why scroll is just zero and I never change it. Content add line, then update. The update copies the full content stuff over to layer. Um, <laughs> mm. I guess so, yeah. I mean, it's mainly just lame because my font is gigantic, but. I don't know which one is from and to. Also, I kind of fucked that up. That's that's slice two. It's backwards. One day I'll learn how to spell. Hey, whoa, hey, whoa. Okay, so <sighs> for some reason, so it calls add line, it wraps this, gets a whole bunch of things, it appends them all. Concatenates them all. And then in range of the new lines, it adds the foreground and background stuff. So that all works just fine. We don't have any outer range errors or anything with that. But for some reason, it doesn't show the very last line. Which is weird. What's making it do that? Once it adds all those lines... It updates, which just copies them over. But a breakpoint where? Um, like here, to see what numbers we're getting. Okay, 
It calls it every frame. Also, what the fuck? Excuse me? Oh, yeah, negative. Wait. This is all fucked up. What? Those aren't valid indices at all. Oh, wait, no, they're not indices. They're. They're like. One to. Well, 15. Well, which window is this for? Because this is doing it for. No, it's. The, it, we only have one scrollable window. It ain't got jack shit. How is it getting these numbers with nothing? Slice from. One plus. Okay, well, that's just one. Um, slice two is. Maybe I need min instead of max? Yeah. That's part of the problem. I don't think it's the entire issue, but that's probably a good idea to fix. Okay. There we go. Wait. That's not good either. Because that's going to give you the entire array. Unless, I mean, if it's not... Okay. We need to see if there's stuff in there to see if it actually works. Um, okay. So let's... Let's interrupt. Let's get rid of the breakpoint. Let's actually run it and, and shove some stuff into the thing and see what it looks like. Okay, perfect. So it's scrolling now, but for some reason it's it's off. By, by like a line. I think it's just one line off, and I don't know... <sighs> that is very pog. Um... How do we... Let's see. So we're going to need to put a breakpoint at... A different function here. We're going to need to put a breakpoint at... Maybe not add line, but like update. Or, well, no, because update is every frame. Uh, maybe like here. Right before it calls update. Yeah, that should be good. That should give us some good information. If I run the correct file. Um... Oh, it's on a knit too, and that's probably why it stops immediately. Or well, because we did, we did breakpoint it here, and it just like stopped immediately. But I think it was just because a knit, and that's the only reason. Um, but right, we wanted to be here after we're adding like a line like this, because I want to inspect. Um. So line. So, wait. Oh. So now, yeah, let's look at full content. That hit the test for two hit points. Um, so let's let's make sure this is all good. So far, it looks fine. Content layer is should be empty. Okay, good. Um, so now, step into. So now we go to the slice, and we begin we begin doing a slice. Uh, okay, slice from. Slice two. Okay, minus one to my... Okay, that sounds good. Minus one is the, the most recent thing, and then two backwards, which seems to line up with how many lines we have. Minus one. Oh. Oh. If this is minus one... And we're going back to. Are we are we miscalculating our slice two? Because that's not an index, right? That's like a relative, like go backwards too. Yeah. So I think we might need to recalculate this number here. It's absolute, not relative. Oh, so it's oh, so it's minus one. 
from wait so is minus one here or here because well if minus two was here it would be outside hmm. okay well let's keep an eye on this and see what we get put in here uh step into yeah so our slice is wrong it's not giving us this our slice is only giving us this so our slice is actually not what we need for some reason um our slice is is misbehaving why is it misbehaving the question yeah see so our slice is wrong i don't know how it's wrong but it is wrong um because with this, we're slicing it and only taking... We're taking everything up to, but not including. It's exclusive on the end, yeah. We need inclusivity. Uh, that's the only That's the only problem. If we can just include the end, which... Should I just do my idea? Um, if we want inclusivity, we need len, right? And just go to the, the last number. Yeah, it's, I, it's an easy thing to miss. It's an easy thing to just be like, oh, well, oops. Um, so we want from the length of it. Oh, wait. What? Uh, okay, well, either way. Also, yeah, no, these are the same, but this should be lines. Um... Omit the colon or add one if not. What? So like just get rid of the slice from and just slice two minus two. And then we're good. Oh, right, I see. Um, this is weird. Let's tinker. Can you do this in Python? No. Um, See, that does work. So that's all we need. We, we just get rid of slice from and we're good. So yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, and I think that's probably what you were saying and I just didn't understand. Because it's, it's always gonna be to the end without a from, so we just omit that. And then we just tell it where to go to. And then there we go. Um. I think that'll do it. Oh shit, you're right. Oh, so we need... Right. Brain damage. Um,
So we need a way to modify both this and this by Y scroll. So. Oh shit, you're right. We could just do that. So slice from should be empty or offset by Y scroll, which I don't really know how to do. If you put zero here, that does no, that doesn't. Yeah, no. Um. So this is fine. Because that should give us the length offset by Y scroll. Yeah, that because we want it right right Y scroll is the bottom part. And then just add height to that. And it's either zero or height. But we don't want min because it's always gonna be zero, because this is gonna be a positive number. The negative is outside of the min function. So we need a max here this time. Because we want the maximum backward scroll. But, uh, hmm. No, but not zero. Oh shit. Um. No, that's not right. Cause like, then it's just gonna go like, oh well, let's go. B well, does it matter? If you go back too many? Hold on. Oh, right, because it's just like positive now. My brain is melting. <laughs> this is so difficult. Thank you for all the help. You're very kind. Um, so, subtract height from slice instead of add. Yeah, I am. Self do, uh, but is is that not what it is? Like, if B is a minus two colon nothing, and that gives you from here to here, isn't this minus two a relative? Like, technically, it's a relative index because it's like you're going two backwards from wherever this is. I. But to see the one that the, I don't know, man, this is so weird. All right, whatever. Oh, I see. So length minus Y scroll brings us up and then minus height. And that's either going to be whatever it is or is it? Okay. 
Yeah. And it's if it's under zero, we want zero, so that the max, yeah. I am just pooping. Uh alright. Oh no, big error. Oh this again. What did I do wrong? Um Y scroll is not defined. Oh, self Y scroll. That's why it broke. I was getting ahead of myself. Oh, and then we need... Is it two from or from two? I think it's two from. Okay. Now it's... I didn't... I forgot to account for the, um, the border, I think, is the only problem here. But we're, we're pretty much there. We just gotta scooch it. Squish one, scooch one. So, just modify by one to each, each thing. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's already looking pretty good there. So we need... The slice from needs to be one more. Um, len minus one, minus y scroll. And then the slice two needs to be one. But that's gonna, no, that's wrong. No, we want, we want all of it from full content, but we need the way it gets displayed in, oh shit. Why is this breaking for the, the render function? That shouldn't be happening. That means there's something wrong here. It, oh, is it... Is it height minus one? Is that the only... Like that? I hope so. No, that makes it even worse. That's the opposite direction. There we go. Holy shit. I can't believe that took like four hours. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What a nightmare. At least it's worth it, I guess. Oh, they're getting experience because they're killing me. That's another side effect of making the player and the, the enemies all the same. Uh, they get to level up too, which could make the game extremely difficult uh, in certain scenarios. But I, I kind of like that as well, I think. Um, so enemies will work the same way as the player where they have skills that can level up. They have experience points and like levels. Um, they have all the same stats. So uh, that could be problematic if you get into a long battle and your enemy starts leveling up their skills and like outpacing you. <laughs> We'll have to see how that works later on when we get into, like, more of the game systems. Um... Whew. Well, there's a basic combat log. Look at that. We can go... Pew! <laughs> and now we just have all of this to do. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap it up there. I am exhausted, and I need food, and then I'm gonna go fucking die. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, and yeah, uh, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, let me see if there's anyone that I follow who's cool that we can raid. Uh, not really. There's really, wow. How is like nobody I follow online? What? All right. Well, anyways, <laughs> yep. I had fun. I hope you guys did too. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. Um, and we'll maybe play some video games. I don't know. We'll see what we do. 
Anyways, hope to catch you guys then, and take care. I will see you next time.